Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has three bloodlines harem. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Angel Philendeman and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Islet. 8 pm. Training ground 44 aka. The forest of death. In this training ground hardly no one visits it, mostly because the nickname of it pretty much says it all, since in the ninja world, you don't get a name without actually earning it, and the forest of death earned it. The only problem was a blonde-haired, whisker-marked ten-year-old Naruto was pretty much dared to go into this training ground by a certain loud-mouthed Inuzuka, though it was kind of his own fault, since he was boosting about how brave he was for pranking a couple of Anbu, hence why Kiba dared him, even though his mother scared the dog boy into not going enough said. A.N. With a mother like Tsum anyone would be scared. The young Naruto was walking around, wrapped up in his orange coat and orange pants, damn it, why did I agree to this, even the old man warned me not to go in here, if I survive this place, I'm blaming Kiba. The young boy mumbled and grunted to himself as he's climbing over a tree root, though he failed to realize there was a slight drop, whoa. About a five foot drop, luckily the root curves from the top towards the bottom, though it ended up causing Naruto to roll backwards like a ball. Though when he reached the bottom, Naruto ended up bumping into something, causing that something to turn around and bite Naruto on the arm, ai ayag. Causing the young blonde to scream in pain. Which spooked the shadowy animal, causing it to run away, though Naruto would swear he didn't scream like a girl, making the animal run because of her ears. Naruto slowly got up, nursing his injured arm to his chest, oh okay, I made it into the forest, I'm getting out before anything else attacks me, thank Kami I can retrace my steps, heh, remembering where I said all those pranks really comes in handy. After a while, Naruto manages to find the way out, without getting hunted, though that's mostly because of the Kyuubi sealed inside of him, though he doesn't know that, along with the animal that bit him running away because of said tailed beast, no one attacks an alpha like the Kyuubi, but Naruto will keep thinking it was his scream. Crawling through the hole that he squeezed through, while protecting his arm, Naruto stood up and says to himself, alright that's it, that's the last time I let anybody dare me into doing something as stupid as that, as long as the place doesn't have the word death in it, I'm not going. Realizing he would do a dare, but now, he has boundaries, as long as it's no place that has wild animals in it, he'll do it. Now that he's in the moonlight, Naruto carefully lifts his arm to see the damage, wince, not too bad, I'm sure come tomorrow it would have healed, hell, I broke my arm once and it healed overnight, this should be nothing. An look up wolfbite on arm on google for reference, and I'm not talking wolf spider. Slowly unzipping his coat, but leaving it on his wounded arm, Naruto wraps his coat around it, not wanting it to bleed out or anything. Slowly Naruto made it home, doing the same thing he did when he sneaked into the forest of death, hide from everyone so no one was the wiser. An. He manages to prank all types of ninjas, his stealth is bound to be greater than even Jiraiya, and we all know the perv gets caught because of his perverted giggling. Once inside his apartment, Naruto shuts the door and locks it, taking a deep breath and looking up with his head against the door, for some reason he was feeling tired, but that could be because it was now just after 9 o'clock, yawn, okay, I'm going to have a quick look at this bite mark and see what the damage is, then it's news time, though why, yawn, am I so tired all of a sudden. Making his way to the bathroom for better lighting, I spent loads of time being awake till after 10, heh, that could be the reason why I sometimes sleep in class. Shaking his head to clear the cobwebs of sleep, Naruto turns on the bathroom light, from our point of view, Naruto looks awfully pale and sweaty with bags under his eyes, slowly removing his coat, he can see the bite marks on his arm, okay, not too bad, the thing didn't bite down to the bone, I'll just wrap it up in bandages for now and see the results tomorrow. Doing that, Naruto could feel himself getting sleepier by the second, at some point he needed the wall to keep himself up, crashing the door open, Naruto flings himself onto his bed, feeling his eyes closing to sleep. Through the night, Naruto could feel his body aching and burning up, making him remove his clothes in his sleep, what he doesn't know was a certain fox was doing something amazing inside Naruto. Mindscape. A.N. We all know what Naruto's mindscape like so to save time I'm skipping it. At the gates of the seal Kyuubi couldn't believe its luck or the luck of its container, brat, you should be grateful with what I'm doing, if I wasn't sealed inside you, you'd be nothing but a wild beast after being bitten by a wolf with a virus that would destroy any lesser man via implosion, but with me here, I can tweak the virus to suit our needs. Since that bastard with the mask would come back for me, this will give you the strength you need to overcome anything by becoming a new type of being. 
lifting its hand towards its face, Kyubi was holding another fox, but this one was an anthropomorphic fox, being calm in the presence of an alpha like Kyubi, just be patient, we wouldn't want to give these stupid villages another reason to hate you, you need to be able to control your animal urges, not to mention I need to make it so that your metabolism doesn't burn through a lot of food. That way you can live off the bare minimum of food without wasting money. Since the fox knows how Naruto is with money, it decided to change the virus enough so Naruto doesn't end up being too strange to everyone, granted he'll let the virus upgrade Naruto's body, along with having a taste for pig, chicken, cow, any meat not involved with human, since it would raise too many red flags, causing people to want to kill Naruto more, and that would be bad for his own health. The fox, using its chakra to change the virus a little more, done, now go and spread, become one with the boy, and become the first ever, wear a fox of Konoha, ha 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 it. A few days later. Slowly, Naruto's eyes blinked open, feeling a little lightheaded, his vision was blurry, W where am I, sitting up and looking around, he made his eyes focus on the room, oh yeah, I'm in my apartment, looking to the floor, Naruto sees a pair of boxers, looking confused for a moment, he looks under the blanket, oh, those must be mine. Grabbing the boxers and putting them on while still sitting on his bed, still dazed from what happened to him, Naruto tries to think of something, that is until someone was banging on his door, with a loud voice yelling, oh I Naruto, you better be up, I'm not missing class just because Iruka sensei was too busy to get you. Naruto knows that voice, he knows it, but can't quite remember it, like it's on the tip of his tongue, getting up from his bed, Naruto makes his way to the door of his apartment, bang, bang, bang. The noise of the door being punched on starting to annoy him. Reaching for the handle, Naruto yanks the door open, would you knock it off, I only just woken up after a fever and, um, you know, is something wrong? It turns out that the young Yamanaka's home lived close to Naruto, practically down the street from him, but because of her rivalry with a certain pinkhead, she hardly noticed, but ended up being asked by Aruka to check on Naruto the next morning, since the teacher was busy with paperwork, he asked her to help out. But at the moment, the young Yamanaka girl was stunned, there was Naruto, in his boxers, though he wasn't scrawny, his body was now built for speed and power, at least for a 10-year-old, the 10-year-old girl thought Naruto looked good with a six-pack, Eno, hello, Earth to Eno, what the hell's wrong with you? She was thankful Naruto is still dense. Shaking her head from her thoughts, Eno looks towards Naruto's face, a slight blush showing, I can't believe I was eyeing Naruto's body of all things. She thought to herself, why yeah, I'm fine, ahem, Iruka sensei asked me to check on you to see if you were alright, since you didn't come to the academy for the past three days. Now that got Naruto's attention, he missed three days of classes, you've got to be kidding, three days, I missed three days of classes, I mean I knew I had a fever, but I didn't think it'd knock me out for that long. Ino began to get impatient, come on Naruto, get dressed before we're really late for classes. Again, that got Naruto's attention, looking down, Naruto saw that he was only in his boxers, thanks to Ino, he just remembered, it seems he was really zonked out of it if he forgot his clothes. Rushing back into his room, Naruto started changing, he was rushing too much that he missed the fact about his body's changes, granted he felt amazing, but at the moment he was focusing on not being late a fourth time for classes, though once he was fully dressed, Naruto looked at himself in confusion, that's strange, my clothes feel tight, even my pants, whatever. I'll think about it after classes. What he didn't know was that Ino heard him, why am I blushing at the thought of his tight pants, I like Sasuke, don't I? A and A confused teenage hormones, everyone has them at that age. Anyway, once fully clothed, though Naruto had to have his coat unzipped to breath, he says to himself, I'm going to need a change of clothes after school, these things are too hard to breath. Now that perked Ino up, a chance to get Naruto a different set of clothes and out of those ugly orange outfits, yes, I'll help him out, though knowing him he'll still want something orange in came Ino the fashionista, her mind going a mile a minute with ideas for Naruto's new look to go with his awesome new body. During her train of thought, Naruto came rushing out, grabbing a slice of bread in his mouth, along with his keys, seeing Ino's thinking face, he knows someone will be in trouble for shopping, Naruto grabs hold of Ino, who was still stuck in her Naruto's new clothes mode, never noticing being put over Naruto's shoulder, once Naruto locks up, he starts running down the street for the academy. The running was what jogged Ino out of her thinking, looking around, Ino sees she was being carried by Naruto, who accidentally had his hand on her ass, which caused the girl to blush, Naruto, what do you think you're doing? Ook. They were a few feet from the academy's entrance, when Ino ended up braining Naruto over the head, causing him to fall on his face and toss the girl off his shoulder, allowing her to land on her feet, only her face was red, with Naruto ending up at her feet, looking up with a welt, Naruto says in pain, what the hell was that for, I only wanted to make sure we weren't late for class. Ino just huffed and looked away, that was for touching my butt and manhandling me, don't you know you're supposed to handle a lady delicately? It wasn't a question but a fact for Ino. 
Burrito sitting up, looks left and right says out loud, a lady, where? Wham. Causing him to imprint his face into the ground again due to putting his foot in his mouth. Eno, her fist smoking, with a red face yells out, just for that, I'm gonna pick out your new clothes, with you paying for them. Pulling his head out of the dirt, Naruto asks, huh, why? Eno, leaning forwards with an angry look says to him, huh, did you say something? Knowing he wasn't gonna win, since he didn't want to get hit again, he merely looks away and scratches his nose nervously, and no, not a thing. Eno straightens herself up, dusting her clothes off and says with a smile, good, wait for me at the entrance here, then we'll begin the hunt for your new look. Knowing better than to question the girl, Naruto suddenly realizes something, oh man, I'm the poor soul to be tortured by Eno's shopping, Shikamaru was right, women are troublesome. The poor boy finishes with waterfall tears. Which starts the beginning Naruto's new life, though the question is, what will happen during the next full moon? But before that he would have to survive the day before Eno sinks her claws into him. Eno walks off leaving Naruto to pull himself together. Looking up Naruto watches Eno walk away. I really need to get out of this. I could skip class. He says to himself as a shadow is now looming over him. Slowly Naruto turns around to find Aruka standing behind him with rope in his hands. What was that Naruto? Question Aruka as he pulled on the rope in his hands as he wraps the boy up in it. Naruto has tears streaming down his cheeks as he had been hogtied by his sensei and is now being carried in like a bag of potatoes. Aruka make his way to his classroom. Out in the hallway he can hear his students fighting and talking. Mostly the girls fighting over his raven hair student Sasuke Chia. The last of the loyal Chihas that are alive and living in the village. Aruka just sighs as he throws Naruto into the classroom as the boy lands into his seat in the back room away from everyone. All eyes turn his way as he is fighting to break free of his bindings. Just as Naruto gets the rope in his mouth, he begins chewing on it, and to the shock and amazement to everyone in the classroom, Naruto was now free and spitting out the piece of rope in his mouth. Man that stuff tastes nasty. When was the last time you washed that rope Aruka sensei? Questioned the blonde as he was now throwing the rope to the front of the class as Aruka pulled himself back together. Inside Naruto's mindscape the Kyubi just watched on smirking. If only these fools knew what was going to happen in the coming days he thought to himself as he watched a werefox run wild outside of his cage. Biba turned to Naruto and smirked. So did you chicken out on going to training ground 44? He questioned the blonde. Naruto glares at the brown hair boy as his puppy crawls into his jacket crying. No, Kiba I didn't chicken out like you did. I went out there and something bit me. Said Naruto as Kiba glared back. This made Shikamaru and Shino look over at Naruto. What do you mean something bit you? Asked Shikamaru as he was up from his nap. Like I said. I was wandering around the training ground when I bumped into something and it bit me. After that I went home and I got a fever and passed out. When Ino showed up this morning I didn't know I had been sleeping for three days straight said Naruto now looking a little annoyed. He held up his arm and you could see on his jacket where something had bit him and some old blood. Did you even clean it out? Asked Kiba as he was shocked as he didn't smell the old blood right away. Naruto glares at him. Yeah. Kiba I cleaned it out when I got home and wrapped it. I just haven't checked the bandages as for Eno was pounding on my front door and didn't give me any time to look over the bite mark. He said with sarcasm dripping in his voice. How about we check it when we break for lunch? My mom is coming by to give Akamaru a pill, and she can look it over. Said Kiba as all the kids nodded their heads and looked down at the bottom of the classroom as Aruka was getting things together to begin class. Time had gone by really slow in Naruto's eyes. As to the others their morning had flown by. But for a blonde he was having a little more trouble than normal to sit still in class, and he just wanted to be outside running and just enjoying the warm sun on his face. Not in a stuffy room with a bunch of people that didn't really like him. Besides the few friends he did have. The lunch bell had finally gone off, and all the kids had made a mad dash for the classroom door as Naruto opened the window next to his desk and jumped to the tree that was next to the window. He sat on the branch as he waited for the others to show up at the base of the tree. One by one Kiba, Shino, Choji, and Shikamaru had shown up, and Naruto climbed down when they saw Tsum walking over to them. Hey pup. Called Tsum as she saw Kiba. Kiba walked up to his mom grinning. Hey mom. He said. Tsum looked over at the boys behind her son and saw Naruto. She smiled to herself. At least my pup is making friends with him she thought to herself. But her thoughts were interrupted as Kiba asked something. What was that? She asked him. Kiba huffed. I asked if you could look at Naruto's arm. He was bitten by something over three days ago and he said he had a fever and has been sleeping for the past three days. So that is why he hadn't been at school. He told his mother. Tsum raised an eyebrow to this. As long as she could remember. Naruto has never gotten sick, and that boy has gone though hell and back, and has been in pretty much prefect health. Sure. 
let me see his arms. She says as she walks over to the only blonde in the group of boys. Ino watches as she is off eating lunch with Hinata, as she didn't feel like jazzing after Sasuke today. Something deep inside of her screamed to flow the other blonde. But what she didn't know. Okay pup take off that jacket and let me see your arms. Orders Tsum as she notices that everything that Naruto is wearing is too small for him. He does as she orders and removes his jacket and she sees the bandage on his arm. She reaches for his arm and slowly she removes the bandage and the smell of old blood is strong on the wrappings. But once she has it all off there is just a small scare of wolf bite on his arm. Where did you get this bite from? Asked Tsum as she was kicking into mother mode. Naruto looked at her a little nervous. I went to training ground 44 the other night after Kiba dared me. I slipped and bumped into something and it bit me and I went home clean it up. Got sick and slept for three days. He explained. Soom turned and glared at her son. It promised him he was going to be in for it once he got home that afternoon. Well it looks like it's pretty much all healed up. You should be fine form now on. But next time you should have gone to an adult to have had this checked out. For the animal that bit you could have been sick and you could have ended up worse or even dead from the bite. She told him as Naruto and the other boys just paled at the idea of dying from a bite. I'll go to Jiji next time. Said Naruto as he knew Tsum knew who he was talking about. Good. Now you pups better eat something and return to class. Ordered Tsum as she watches the boys run off. I thought I killed the last wolf in the forest. She thought to herself as she left to visit the Hokage to let him know of the latest of Naruto's injuries and where he got it. Just something about left her feeling unsettled. But it might just be that a new wolf pack might have gotten into the village and no one in her clan smelt them. The hour of Naruto's doom had finally drawn and he stood outside the academy waiting his date with the fashion demon of Konoha Ino Yamanaka. Why am I still waiting here? He asked himself as he looked to the village planning to make a break for it. For you know better and also know I would hunt you down and make you buy me a few outfits for wasting my time as well. Came the voice of Ino from behind him as he turned to see her stand there with her hand on her hip. Naruto just rolled his eyes at her. Fine whatever. Come on let's get this over and done with. Said Naruto never knowing these would be his famous last words to her. Chapter 2. Ino before we go to some of your favorite stores. I only have few places I am able to shop. Said Naruto as he turns away from the platinum blonde girl. Ino glares at him. Well if you stopped pranking half the village. Maybe half the store owners would be a lot nicer to you. She scolded him. Yeah keep telling yourself that. Believe that's the reason you see people treating me like shit Naruto thought to himself as he head to one of the stores that Joji's mom owns. Chichi Akamichi stood behind the counter as she saw Naruto and Ino walk into her store. Hello, Naruto-kun. Ino-chan. Said Chichi as she walks up to the children with a smile. Naruto grins at the large woman before him. Hi Kai-chan. He told her as he walks up to her for a hug. Ino watched the two interact with each other as she follows after her fellow blonde up to the large woman for a hug as well. Hello, Kai Mama. She told her childhood friend's mother. What brings you two here? Questioned Chichi as she eyes them both. Naruto had a growth spurt and I'm going to make sure he is wearing something normal and not that orange monster he loves so much. Said Ino as she makes a face at his orange jumpsuit. Hey. Orange is awesome. Defended Naruto as he was now pout as he watched the large woman now laughing at him. Well you're more than welcome to find something here for him. Said Chichi as she went back behind the counter. Outside of Akamichi Rose. Outside of Akamichi Rose stood Hinata as she watched from outside of the store though the window as Ino held up different color shirts to Naruto. Nuo oh how can Ino-san be doing this to me? Questioned Hinata as she watched you new blonde hair rival for the one she loves. Inside the store. Out of the corner of her eye Ino caught the sight of an indigo hair girl watching from outside of the store at here, shoving shirts into Naruto's arms. Here go try these on. She ordered him. Yeah fine whatever. Said Naruto as he turned away from her walking to a dressing room that Chichi set up for him. Ino moves around the store and out the open door to where Hinata doesn't see her as she sneaks up behind the shy Hayuga heiress. What are you doing Hinata? Asked Ino with a smirk. Beep. Escapes Hinata's lips as she spins around and faces Ino with her cheeks, now a bright scarlet color that Ino has ever seen in her life. Iiij just wa wanted to see what you and Naruto-kun are doing. Ino nods her head to this. All I am doing is helping him find something new to wear. If you want to help. All you have to do is ask. She tells the shy girl. Ah oh no. Why are you h helping him? Questioned Hinata feeling less nervous. Ino stood there for a few seconds not really sure why herself about why she was helping the blonde hair misfit from their class. I'm not sure. But you know he would look better in something better than always in that orange monster of an eyesore he is always wearing and if he truly wants to be a shinobi might as well now get him up to pair with what to wear and what not to wear. She told the indigo hair girl. 
Inada nodded her head and followed Ino into the store, just as Naruto walked out of the dressing room with black cargo pants with a few dozen pockets and a skin-tight black shirt with a fishnet shirt over it. He looked at both girls with a slight grin. What do you two think? He asked them. Both girls had a slight blush on their cheeks as Chichi walked up behind them. I think that suits you quite well Naruto-kun. She told the orange-loving boy as he handed him a black duster with an orange Uzumaki swirl on the back of it and a black cloth headband with the same orange swirl. Naruto tried it on and looked himself in the mirror grinning at the look. Hinata blushed a little more as she looked around the store and saw an orange bottom-up shirt and walked over and grabbed it and came back over to him. Here try this on over the black shirt and fishnet. She told him without the stutter. Something had come over her that she felt calm for once. Maybe just maybe she was getting over her fear and becoming a little stronger. Thank you, Hinata-chan. Said Naruto as he was now grinning as he slipped off the duster and put the shirt on leaving it up button. He looked at the three standing behind him for the seal of approval about his new look as he slipped on black ninja boots. Ino grinned at the new look. She liked it and it suited him oddly well. Hinata was liking this look as well. Chichi was happy to see that Naruto had made a couple of friends that are willing to help him. You look good for once Naruto. Said Ino as she grinned. Why you look real really nice Naruto-kun. Said Hinata feeling a little nervous and her cheeks heating up a little more. I think we have your new look Naruto-kun. Come by tomorrow and I'll have several sets ready for you. For now I just have two of those jackets and three cargo pants and four of each of those shirts and I want to at least give you two weeks worth of clothing. I know how you with training are, so I want to make sure they hold up, so I have to add seals to the others as I have already added to these ones. Said Chichi as she smiled at the blonde hair misfit of Kanoha. She has always been fair to the boy, for she always had a feeling that he was the son of her late teammate Kishina Yuzumaki, and she would do anything for her late best friend. Naruto bowed to the large woman and smiled up at her. Thank you, Chichi-chan. Are you going to put it on the old man's tab? He asked her. She nodded at this and he sighed in relief for he wasn't sure he was going to have enough for everything he bought here today. Across the village at the Yamanaka compound. Ino's father was standing in the family home looking over at his wife with a nervous expression on his face. Inoichi what is troubling you? Asked Yusagi Yamanaka wife of Inoichi and mother of Ino. Inoichi looked over at his wife. He slowly let out a sigh before he spoke. It is the family curse. I am worried about it might not skip Ino-chan. He told her. Isagi looked over at her husband with fear in her eyes. What do you mean you're not sure that it will skip Ino-chan? She questioned. Didn't it skip you? He nodded to this. Yes, it did. Skip me. But it is rare to skip two or three generations. How Ino turned ten not that long ago we should begin to start seeing signs if it will come to pass. He told his now worried wife. How could your great 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 grandfather be so foolish to piss of an old gypsy when he was a boy? To curse his family with the mark of the weird cat of all things. Said Yusagi as she let out a sigh. She was told the family curse the moment she married her husband and became pregnant with Ino. For there might be a chance of that curse following their child. At what age does the curse take full hold of the person? She questioned him. Ino turned and pulled an old bookstand in the living room. Flipping though a couple of pages he found what he was looking for. For his great-grandfather many times over had kept a details dairy of the transformation of his children that were affected by the curse. It states here that it will take full effect during the first full moon of their twelfth year of their life. But also a strong alpha could affect it and cause the transformation to happen quicker. But there isn't any alphas in her class and the Inuzuka heir isn't nothing more than a beta or omega at best. He told his wife trying to reassure her. All we must do is watch for a marking to appear on his left shoulder of a cat claws. Isagi just nodded her head to this. She was worried for her baby. She knew her class had several strong boys and only two came to mind. One being the so-called rookie of the year and the dead last for that boy seemed to be more than what he let on. Later that evening. Ino had finally gotten home from her shopping trip with Naruto and Hinata. He was surprisingly not as stupid as she believed him to be. He had walked her home and then walked Hinata home for when they had finished shopping it was already late and it wouldn't look too well that two clan heiress walking alone home. So he took it upon himself to escort them both to their clan estates before making his way home. I'm home. Said Ino as she walked into her family home. Hello sweetie. Called Yusagi from the kitchen as she was making dinner for her family. Hello princess. You're getting home kind of late today. Questioned Inoichi as he watched his daughter put her bag down and walk into the kitchen towards her parents as they had been chatting about the family curse all afternoon and evening. She smiled at both of them. Well yeah. I had to help Naruto find something better to wear beside that ugly monster of an orange jumpsuit he loves so much. She told them both. Inoichi looked at his daughter a little puzzled. What do you mean you had to help him? He asked her. Ino sighed. 
well yesterday after school Aruka sensei asked me to go and check on Naruto to find out why he hadn't shown up for class for the last three day, for Aruka sensei couldn't do it himself, for he has been busy with teacher meetings, and after the meetings he helps out at the Hokage tower. So how we don't live that far from Naruto he figured I would be the best bet to ask. So this morning I left a little early so I wouldn't be late and went over to Naruto's house. When he opened the door after I was knocking like for five minutes he was standing there in his boxers. Said Eno as her father was turning a little red for, he was a little upset that the boy would open the door dressed only in his underwear. His wife walked up to him and placed her gentle hand on his shoulder to calm him down before he went over the boy's house to yell at him. Go ahead and tell us what else happened sweetie. Said her mother. Eno nodded. When he opened the door that way. His boy wasn't like weak looking. He was built more muscles and his boxers seems to be a little small for him. When I asked him why he hasn't been in class for three days he looked at me in shock and told me. He had a fever and been sleeping for three days straight, thinking he had only slept one day. I told him to hurry up and get dressed so we wouldn't be late. She told her parents. Did he tell you what brought on this fever? Asked Inoichi as he was now worried. For he knew Naruto has never gotten sick for the fox sealed within him, had always made sure the boy was in pretty much always in prefect health, even after beatings the boy would bounce back in a day or two. Ino frowned at her father. I was going to get to that. She told him as she kept talking. When he came back his clothes were too thigh for him and I was shocked to see he has a growth spurt, and after seeing that I got lost and thought that he would need help with shopping, and during that time he picked me up and ran us both to school, and when we got there I hit him over the head. Oh before I forget I did ask what caused the fever, and he said he got bitten by something in training ground 44. I guess he and Kiba had a bet to go there a couple days ago and Kiba chicken out or more likely his mother threatened him, and he didn't show up, and Naruto went all alone, and he said he slipped and bumped into something, and it bit him. What I saw and overheard from Kiba's mom during lunch was he got bit by a wolf. She didn't seem too happy about it. Said Ino as she studied her parents' faces before her. Well Tsum don't like haven't wild packs of wolves running around the village for about 15 years ago, several children went missing by wolf attacks, and her clan and several members of our clan and the Nara, Akamichi clans, had gathered together and hunted down the pack that was hiding in the forest of death and wiped them all out. Said Inoichi as he remember his father and him being part of that hunt. Yes, that was a frightening time. For it was around the time the second war ended and the third war was about to begin. Said Yusagi as she remember that night. For she had last her older sister to a wolf attack. Ino looked a little shocked. Really? There was wolf attacks like that within the village? She asked her parents. They both nodded her head. Yes, father was worried for it was drawing too much attention those that had been affected by the family curse, had almost been caught during that time, and blamed for the murders he thought to himself, as the family worked hard to keep those effect caged and chained up in the basement of the main house. Wow that is scary to think about. Said Ino as she turned around to run upstairs to get clean up before dinner. As she turned around her father saw the marking, he feared on his daughter's shoulder slowly appear. Something had tricked it to slowly being to appear now. After she was gone and out of hearing Inoichi turned to his wife with a frown marring his face. We have trouble. Inoichi told his wife. Isagi looked over at her husband a little confused at first. What do you mean? She asked him. The marking is appearing. Was all Inoichi told her as she had the look of horror. So very soon they would have to tell their daughter the truth about their family curse. Hokage Tower. Tsu Minyazuka stood before the third Hokage. Sir. We have trouble for Naruto has bite marks on his forearm from a wolf that he claims bit him three nights ago in the forest of death. She tells him as she frowns at him. The third Hokage looks at her with worry. I thought your clan and the others had killed all the wolves in the forest over 15 years ago. He asked her as he now worried for his grandson. We did. We killed the pack of about 30 wolves that night. But we never found the den where the cubs were kept. So we could have missed a female with about maybe six or more cubs she was left to protect as the others hunted said Tsum as she felt upset and guilty. It is strange that they kept quiet and low-key for this long. Said the third Hokage as he studied the woman before him. Wolves are smart and can learn and adopt to anything to keep themselves and their young safe. Said Tsum as she was ready to set that whole train ground ablaze once and for all. Tsuritobi nodded his head to this. Do you think your clan would be able this time to find the den? He asked her. Tsum shook her head no. I have spent all afternoon and even until just a half hour ago they're trying to track the pack that might be left. All I found is where Naruto was attacked for there was some blood and his scent and the scent of the wolf, and then it was gone. Like it learned to mask its scent. She told the aged man before her. This made Siratobi arch a brow to this. That wolf was showing intelligence on a human level. This could be very dangerous for those who go into that training ground. 
for now I will have the training ground closed off and have several Hyugas go with several of your clansmen to see if they can spot any tracks that your Ninkin might have missed. He tells her as she nodded her head. With Hinata. Naruto had dropped the girl off at her compound as the father was standing outside the walls waiting for her as she was late for her training and it was odd for the girl to not come right home from school. To just banish after she finishes her clan training. Hinata. Said Hisashi as he narrows his eyes at the blonde hair boy walking with his daughter. Hinata grows stiff and more nervous as she hears her father say her name and spots him waiting for her. But to her shock and surprise Naruto speaks up. I am sorry Hinata is coming home late Lord Hyuga. She was with myself and Ino Yamanaka at Lady Chichi Akimichi's clothing stop aiding Ino-chan in helping me pick out proper attire of a young and up-and-coming shinobi like myself. Said Naruto. This shocked all around him for he spoke in a way no one has ever heard him speak. For he has never shown any type of respect to anyone. Not even the Hokage himself has ever gotten his type of respect from the boy. Then you should have come straight here with Hinata and Miss Yamanaka and informed me or her personal guard of this. For Ko has been seeking the entire village for Hinata. Said Hisashi as he glared at the boy before him. I am sorry for the trouble that I have caused for her and her personal guard. All I ask is to be forgiven as I didn't wish any trouble to befall my friend. Said Naruto. So he sees Hinata and Ino as his friend thought Hisashi as he turned around to walk back into the compound before stopping and once more looking at Naruto. Make sure you or Miss Yamanaka don't let this happen again. Come Hinata you have training to do. He said as he vanished behind, he opened gates as Hinata nodded her head and turned to Naruto. I'll see you tomorrow. Said Hinata and with that she runs into her family compound and to find her father stand there just waiting and watching. Why did you become friends with the Yamanaka heirs and young Yuzumaki? He questioned his daughter. Hinata looked up at her father. Today at lunch I became friends with Ino-chan and after school with Naruto as Ino-chan asked me to help her with Naruto-kun's new look. She didn't like his orange jumpsuit and he needed new clothing for he had grown overnight. She told her father. The sashi nodded his head and continued walking. Minato your son looks just like you at this age. Will he grow up to be as strong as you and Kishina? Hisashi questioned himself. For him and his late wife had been at Minato's and Kishina's wedding and once they had fallen the night of the Kayubi he had tried to take their son on. But he wasn't allowed but from the shadows he did as much as he could with helping the boy. He would make sure the boy had food and a roof over his head and money when he would need it. For the Hayugas managed several of the companies that Minato and Kishina had before they died and left to their son. Only several within the clan knew the truth and didn't see the boy as the beast but as the child cursed as they are with a seal that binds them. As he is bound to a beast they are bound to the main branch of their family. Inside Naruto's mindscape. The Werefox virus had done some wonders to the mindscape as it changed it from a dank and dreary old sower to a lush and beautiful forest as he worked on fixing the boy's mind and making him more cunning and intelligent. Something he was going to need when he undergone his first full moon and transformation into a Werefox. The Kyubi was proud of himself for fixing the virus and making it more intelligent and cutting back on the primal menace that it would normally be. For his jailer to be behaving as a primal and mindless beast once he turned wouldn't work very well for either of them for the villagers would demand his death even more so than what they already do now. It was a wonder the boy ever made it out alive on his birthday. Even the Kyubi wasn't a miracle worker. It must have something to do with his mother's bloodline of being an Yuzumaki for they have insane healing and then that in the Kyubi. The boy was almost immortal. You've done well with the boy. The Kyubi told the virus as the Werefox stood before the great nine-tailed beast. I've only done as you have asked of me master. Said the Werefox as it bowed to the mighty nine tails. The full moon is three nights from now. The boy shall be able to handle his first change. Questioned the Kyubi for the beast did worry a little for his jailer for the child was still innocent even though he was forced to house him. He couldn't blame the boy for the burden that was thrust upon him just an hour after his birth. He shall be fine. During his first change he shall me use both. For he must become one with me. After he must face his darkness. For if he doesn't the curse could drive him mad with bloodlust. Even though you have changed his hunger for more towards animals. It will not stop him from going on a killing spree. That is what has happened to other werewolves in the past. This is where you must step in and guide the child. For it is you're the one hold his true feelings and holding his anger and hatred for others within yourself. Said the werefox as he took on a more human from as it stood on two legs and its paws became more human. That shall be tricky for I know the child will be angry with me and focus all his anger and hate on me for a while. Said the Kyubi as he looked into the shadows of his cage as he saw the black hair from of his jailer sleeping with golden chains, wooden chains, and vines wrapped around him. Naruto has three bloodline that the Kyubi has sealed until he is ready for the boy to have them. But the time seems to be drawing near. For the boy will need them to face his darkness and to keep his worsight at bay. 
This shall be a long night for the Kyubi, for he was going to set to work to allow these bloodline to awaken while the child sleeps. Naruto. Naruto had gotten home and put away what he had gotten from Chichi, along with some sleeping clothes that he can change into. He had some orange basketball shorts he could put on with a black tank top. He didn't feel like wearing his sleeping clothes just yet, and he needed to go over his homework he had missed the past three days. Sitting down at his small kitchen table, Naruto puts his book back down and pulls out his books and notebooks with the notes that Hinata had given him and all his homework for the week. Man this is going to take all night to do. Naruto whined to no one but himself. Just then there was a knock at his door. Looking up from his notes Naruto stood up and walked over to his door. On the other side of the door stood the third Hokage, along with Tsuma and Yuzuka, and along with his personal Dr. Washu Hakubi. She looked to be about 13 years old, but was in her 30s maybe older, with long hot pink hair and lime green eyes. No one really knew for she stayed in what she called her chibi form. Some believed her to be part of the Yuzumaki family for she was from the Hidden Whirlpool village, but she would never talk about her past. All she would say. A lady has a right to her privacy. I'll leave it at that. Naruto slowly opened the door and peeks his head out to see the old man. Hey old man. Said Naruto as he saw the others. Tsuritobi smiled. Hello Naruto. Do you mind if we come in? Asked Saratobi as he stood before the two women and looked Naruto dead in the eyes. Naruto moved away from the door and opened it all the way. Yeah sure. But sorry for the mess. I haven't cleaned it for a couple of days. For I have been sleeping for three days straight for I had a fever the other night. He told the old man and the two women with him. Washu studied Naruto. How did you feel with the fever Naruto-kun? She asked him as she walked up to him putting her hand on his forehead. Naruto blinked a couple of times before he answered as he needed to think for a couple of seconds. Well after I cleaned and bandaged my bite mark. I got really dizzy and sleepy and my body felt really warm. Before I knew it. I had passed out on top of my bed and woke up three days later to Eno pounding on my door and during the time I was sleeping, I somehow stripped out of my clothing and grew. He told him. In fact Naruto was no longer 4'9", but about 5'3", maybe a little talker. But Washu would need to take him to the hospital for a better checkup. I can see that Naruto kun. You don't look as small as you used to be. Said Saratobi as the young boy just glared at his grandfather figure. Not nice old man. Not nice at all. Said Naruto as he sat back down at the kitchen table looking at his homework that he was really wanting to get started and over and done with. So what brings you all by? He asks as he looks over at Tsuma and Yuzuka. I reported to the Hokage about the bite mark on your forearm and he wanted your personal doctor to look at it. Said Tsuma as he looked over at Naruto's still bandaged forearm. Naruto looked down at his arm and slightly frowned. As he had forgotten about it. You know Naruto-kun you hurt my feelings for not coming and seeing me right away. You could have gotten really sick and I would have never known. You know where I live and you could have come to my home. Someone would have gone and got me if I was at the hospital. Said Washu with a small pout as she was making her eyes all watery. Naruto couldn't help but blush and look away from Washu for her antics always made him feel guilty and weird in some ways. He never knew why. I'm sorry little Washu-chan. Said Naruto looking sheepishly at her as he rubbed the back of his head. Washu grins as she walks up to Naruto pulling him into a hug barring his face into her sizable chest. That's okay Naruto-kun. I forgive you this time. She tells him letting him go. Now go sit down. So I can look at that bite mark on your forearm. She tells him as the others in the apartment sweat drop at her antics. Is she really a doctor? Questioned Tsum to herself. Lucky little bastard. She never does that with me pouted Saratobi as he envied the young boy before him. Elsewhere. Somewhere in the land of moon a man with long white hair looks over to the south to where the land of fire is. Something tells me I am missing something very perverted and someone important to me is a very lucky bastard. He tells himself as he is spying on the girls at the nude beach for his latest book. Back with Naruto. Washu pulls out a scroll and unrolls it and focuses her chakra into it as a medical bag pops out and next to the laptop computer appears with two small dolls that look like her standing on each side of it. Tsum was a little creeped out by the dolls. All right, Naruto kun, put your arm on the table so I can look it over. Says Washu as she had moved his books and homework and placed a white cloth down and put on blue gloves. Naruto does as he is told as Washu removes his bandages and sees that the bite mark is fully healed, and only thing left is the teeth markings where the beast had bitten him. Hm. Said Washu as she looked it over and typed something on her computer and pulled a camera out of nowhere and took several pictures of it. Well, it healed nicely, and it appears you will have scares for once in your life. Which is odd, for you have never scared before. Said Washu as she pulls out a needle and several tubes. She was going to need to take several blood samples to make sure he didn't have any infections or anything in his blood. I need you to hold still so I can get some blood samples to make sure you don't get sick. 
she tells him as she cleans his arms and draws several tubes of blood. The Kyubi watches from within the boy and pushes forth his bloodlines and hides the Werefox virus from the odd pink hair doctor. He didn't trust her as far as he could hit her with his nine tails. For her chakra felt old than his father's. That damn women can be troublesome. For she isn't like all those other monkeys, and I believe if anyone could find the Werefox virus. She would be the one that could find it he thought to himself as the virus hid in his cage with him. Though that didn't hurt too badly. Asked Washu as she grinned at the boy before her. Naruto just smiled at her. Not was fine little Washu. He tells her. So can I get back to my homework or is there something else that you all needed? He asked them. Soom looked at Naruto with a little worry in her eyes. Did you see what bit you? She asked the boy as the Hokage and Washu looked into his refrigerator and cupboards to make sure he had food to eat. All they found was ramen. Washu frowned as well as the Hokage as he motioned with his hand as a Niko Anbu appeared before him. Niko could you go shopping for Naruto-kun and get him about two months worth of food. For he is growing and he is going to be eating more. So that will last him about two weeks maybe three. He tells her as he goes back to listening to Tsum and Naruto talking. It was dark and all I saw was glowing yellow eyes and a yip growl as it bit me and ran off as I screamed at it. Said Naruto as he looked down at his hands a little sheepishly. Soom nodded her head. Thank you Naruto. She tells him as she turns to the third. That's all I needed Lord Hokage. She tells her leader. He needs to her. Very well. Well Naruto-kun we will take our leave and Niko will be returning shortly with some supplies for you. If you need anything else just let me know. He tells the young boy as he nods and goes back to his homework as the others let themselves out. I need to get to the hospital to run all these tests to see what brought on that fever on. For that is not common with him. Said Washu as she was now frowning and had a hard look on her face as she was thinking and biting her thumb as she sunk into the ground with a pink swirl. The Hokage just nodded his head as he walked back to the Hokage Tower. He didn't feel like getting there quickly. He just wanted to enjoy the cool October night air as he figured he would finish a little bit of paperwork as he knew Washu would have a report to him very soon. Chapter 3. Full Moon Hijinks. It was the day before Halloween and Naruto was sitting in class. He had caught up on his missing homework thanks to Hinata and Surpresal Ino's help. Since that day Ino had to go and check up on our blonde misfit. She had grown close to him and what shocked the others. She had stopped her fangirling over Sasuke Chia. In ways Sasuke was grateful for losing one of his fangirls. But also, he was a little upset for she is a clan heiress and of better breeding stock than the other girls that are chasing after. Granted a couple of them are from councilman family or have claims to be related to nobles. But that was it, they were just claims and that wouldn't do for when he was ready to rebuild his clan. But that was something he would worry about once he was ready and much older for. So what are you going to be for Halloween? Asked Naruto to the two girls that now joined his little group. Ah no. I really haven't thought about it. For I have to take my little sister out trick-or-treating. Said Hinata as she was stuttering less and was blushing a lot less as well. Diba grinned at her. Well I'm going as vampire. Naruto laughed. That is a fitting costume for you Kiba. He told the dog boy. Diba looked at him a little puzzled. Why do you say that? He questioned not knowing he was setting himself up for something. Naruto grinned even more before he spoke. For I always knew you sucked and by being a vampire you're showing you suck even more. He joked as Kiba growled at him as the others just laughed at the lame joke. Well I'm going as Little Red Riding Hood. Said Ino as she was grinning. All I need is a big bad wolf. As she said this, she was looking at Naruto. Naruto for once caught on and looked over at Ino. I really haven't thought about what I'm going to be for Halloween. But a werewolf sounds pretty awesome if you think about it. He said with a huge grin. Hey, Ino, why didn't you ask me to be your werewolf to go along with your costume? Questioned Kiba as he was now pouting at the blonde girl before him. Ino narrowed her eyes at Kiba. Because you suck as a wolf and I think you would be a good vampire for you really do suck at everything you do. She told him as he was now in the corner pouting and drawing little circles with his finger as the others just laughed. Troublesome blondes. Sighed Shikamaru as he just listened to his friends plan out their night out. Ino had gotten to talking to Hinata about what she should dress up as. As the boys talked some more and took it one step farther and did a hinge into what he thought a werewolf looked like. Before everyone was a blonde with a small hints of orange fur werewolf with glowing crimson eyes and his clothes took on a tattered and ripped look to them. Wow man that is awesome. Said Kiba as he was shocked as what he was seeing. Even his puppy Akamaru was shocked at the sight before him. He barked at his human partner. Kiba looked down at the puppy. What is that boy? He said it he paused and sniffed the air around Naruto. What you're right. He does smell like a wolf. Man Naruto I don't know how you do it but that is awesome. Ino grinned. You're going to look awesome in class tomorrow for the Halloween party. But do you think you can hold that hinge all day? She asked the blonde hair werewolf before her. Naruto grinned at her. 
yeah. I'm able to hold it for about two days. I have tested out Henge likes this before once we learned this in class last year. He told them all. Not knowing what was going on inside his mind the Kyubi and the Werefox both grinned. The boy without knowing it had an idea of what he was going to look like once to change the following night. But they figure they would allow him his fun for once in his short miserable life. But once 2am rolled around and the moon was at its highest. He was theirs and he might not like what was going to happen. Very soon brat we will meet and you will understand what happened that accursed knight thought the Kyubi to himself as he watched the chains, wood, and vines loosen on the dark part of Naruto's soul. I hope his faith in this human child isn't wasted. For if he proves to be strong enough to overpower this curse, many great things lay ahead of him thought the Werefox virus. The one that bite Naruto that night was the new alpha born to the pack that was killed by all the shinobi 15 years ago. But during those 15 years of hiding and eating scraps and trying not to be caught the wolf had gotten weak and sick. This was her last chance at finding a mate or passing on her curse to a new alpha and by biting the boy. She had subconsciously made him the new alpha. Something that he would have to prove in time. For one other made it out that night 15 years ago and hungers for that title of alpha. Back with the others. So we will all meet at Hinata-chan's compound and at 9pm we will send her sister off with Ko and go to the Halloween party at Ino-chan's parents are having. Said Naruto as he was looking forward to his first Halloween that he would be able to enjoy himself. For this henge no one would know it's him and not have to worry about the candy being poisoned. But he would still take it to Washu. For the woman had an odd way of checking all the candy for the boy. The H thank sounds great and I believe my father will be at the party. So I don't have to trouble anyone to walk me home afterwards. Said Hinata as she was a little nervous now. Naruto grins. It's no trouble walking you home Hinata-chan. He told her. Anyways Hinata. I think my dad asked your dad if you could stay over that night. For that what I was going to ask you. Said Ino as she smiled at the shy heiress. During these past couple of days they had became the best of friends, and oddly enough. If it wasn't for Naruto, they don't think they would have become best friends. Until maybe later in life. As the group talked about Ino's family's Halloween party, Sakura came walking around the corner of the academy building. She saw Ino and Hinata sitting next to each other, with Naruto laying down in front of them, as they all chatted as the others made up the circle. She walked up to them. Hey piggy. Said Sakura as she was glaring at the blonde hair girl. Ino looks up to see the pinket. What is it billboard brow? She asked with annoyance lacing her voice. Sakura narrowed her eyes at the platinum blonde. We missed you at the club meeting last night. She told her. Ha. Sorry Sakura I have better things to do with my time than chase some boy around. Said Ino. This shocked everyone as no one would have ever thought that Ino Yamanaka the president of the We Love Sasuke Chiha fan club would ever say that about the boy in a million years. Well I guess that means Sasuke Kun is all mine then. Said Sakura with a smug smile on her face. I guess so. But have been questioning as of late if Sasuke is gay for he never really talks to us and only ever stares at Naruto when he is in class. Said Ino as now Naruto is turning green and the other guys are paling at the idea of Sasu checking them out. You can blame that on some crazy Sasuke Snuru CMV that I even thought about that. YouTube a grand but evil thing at times. Don't you dare say that about my Sasu kun. Screeched Sakura as she was now in Ino's face. Ino now jumping to her feet let out a soft cat like growl as her eyes flash a slight yellow but one had to be watching to catch it and guess who caught it. Well three people did. But Sakura was still clueless to the danger she was in. I will speak about anyone. Any way I please. For who do you think you are ordering me around? She growled out. I am a daughter of a council member and I have every right to order you around Ino Yamanaka. Said Sakura as she believed she held more power than the girl that stood before her. Ha! What a joke. Don't make me laugh. Growled out Ino as her voice got louder as she was getting closer to Sakura. I am a clan heiress. My father has a seat on the shinobi council. A seat that once I come to age and take over as clan head. I shall be taking over. For your mother's seat. That is nothing to brag about. For she is voted in and you would never get that seat unless you get yourself voted onto the council. For you once you're older will have to play the game of politics to have any power. Where I was like in royalty was born into it. She told the pinket as now Sakura was shocked by this. For Ino never rubbed her nose into her being an heiress when they used to be friends. But there was the key word used to be. I don't care. My mother still holds a good amount of power to make everyone's life hell said Sakura as she was now grinning at the others. Yeah she knows better than to cross me. All I have to do is tell mommy Ino is being mean to me and rubbing her era statues in my face and calling me names and she will be banned from all her favorite stores, her inner self thought smugly. 
you do forget that with Ino she has the Nara, Akamichi, Inuzuka, and Hyuga clan backing her family as they are all on the council and can destroy all of the civilian council with one move, right? Questioned Naruto as the other just looked at him with shock. It appeared someone was listening in class for once. What? He asked. Troublesome. But he is right. If your mother and the civilian council make a move against Ino or her family. Our clans will step in and make a move that will not only destroy them, but of them removed from office. For the councils were not set up to be used by their children to see who's held more power. Said Shikamaru. Unknown to the kids Ishino, Yusagi, Chichi and Tsum had come to tell the kids to meet at Ino's house after class was over to work on any last minute costumes. For they knew Naruto would have some trouble and they wanted to help the boy. All the mothers stood there listening and proud of their children and of the blonde for they were right about what was said. Tsum being to bold woman she has walked up to the kids as Naruto picked up on her sent way before Kiba did. Hey, Kiba, your mom is here. He told the fear looking boy. Who in turn looked over Hinata's shoulder to see his mother walking up to them. He looked back down at the blonde laying on the grass with his eyes closed, enjoying the warm sun on his face. How did you know my mom was here? He asked Naruto. Naruto opened one of his baby blues and looked at Kiba. I could smell her. Was all he said as Tsum heard him and smelt herself. She didn't stink she just had a shower just two hours ago and all she had done so far was have tea with the other mothers. The other mothers followed behind her for they allowed her to lead for they wanted to see how this all played out. The boys are right little girl. So just remember. We shinobi hold more power than what you civilians believe we do. For this is a military village. Not a civilian village and if your mother and the others don't like that. I'm sure I can pay a few gen and teams to pack up their shit for them to move to another village that is all civilian and they can deal with bandit raids every couple of days to weeks. As for living in this village they are safe from that worry. But the only thing they must worry about and fear is an attack form another village on our own. Said Tsum as she was glaring at the now frightened Pinket. And no, ma'am. Was all Sakura said as she ran away from the fear looking woman. Was it something I said? Asked Tsum as she was grinning. They rolled around on the dirt laughing. That was great mom. You knocked her down a few notches. She thinks her shit doesn't stink because her mother is on the civilian council and that she can get away with murder. He tells his mother. Well the girl is wrong. For how Naruto and Shikamaru pointed out. As well as Ino did. Her mom was elected in. As those who are heirs will take over their parent's seat. Said Yusagi as she walked up to the kids. Hey mom what brings you here? Asks Ino as she was looking at all the other moms. Oh we came by to tell you all to come to our house after the academy lets out. For we are going to finish all your Halloween costumes and yes Hinata your father already knows and your sister will be there for she wants to see what you pick out. Said Yusagi as she smiles at the shy heiress. Thank you. Says Hinata as she stands to bow to the women before her. Naruto grins. I got my costume covered. He tells the others. Oh? Asks Yoshino as she looks at the boy. What are you going to be? She asks him. I'm going to be the big bad werewolf to Ino's little red riding hood costume. Says Naruto as the mothers are snickering at this. Oh how cute. Says Chichi. Naruto looks at her a little puzzled but doesn't say anything as Ino and Hinata both blush as they catch on to what Chichi is saying. Just as Naruto is going to ask what makes his costume so cute the bell rings. Their lunch break was over and it was time to head back into the classroom to their awaiting teachers. One they all loved as the other they could really careless about. With that they say their goodbyes and leave the mothers to talk among themselves. Kichi looks over at Yusagi. It's so adorable that they are doing a couple's costume. She tells her longtime friend. Yusagi looks over at her friend and the other ladies. It is very sweet and cute. I am happy that my little Ino-chan is now hanging out with true friends and not wasting her time with those fangirls. Those girls that chase after that bratty Ichiha boy are so toxic. It was to the point that Inoichi or me would have to drag a kicking and screaming Ino into the backyard to do any type of training, and even then, we had to sweeten the deal to get her to do anything. She tells the others. It appears since that day she came into my store with Naruto. She has grown a lot. Even Naruto has grown a lot. He is acting years beyond his age and I think he will be good for the kids to have around. Says Shichi as she thinks back to that day the kids came in. If only he could get our lazy sons to train more. I would be happier. Said Yoshino as she is now grinning at a knowing Tsum. I agree and that pup has the air of an alpha. That is something that will push my son in the future and if need be. I might have to have the boy kick my son's ass and prove the point of a natural born alpha to a beta that parades around as an alpha. Said Tsum as she is now thinking about the future of her clan and village. The day flew by as the final bell of the day went off and all the genin hopefuls ran out of the classroom. As for Naruto he left the same way he did during their lunch. For he didn't want Sasuke anywhere near him. With just that thought of the boy maybe liking him in that way. 
It frightened Naruto and he didn't like it one little bit. Hospital. Washu sat in her own private lab in the basement of the hospital as she looked over all the blood work she had down on Naruto. Okay my little guinea pig, what secrets are you hiding from me? She says to no one but herself. Washu you are the greatest. Says Doll 1. Washu you will know all his secrets before the day is out. Says Doll 2. Washu looks over at her two little dolls that she loves creeping people out with. I know. For I am a super genius and with my help I will make Naruto come very strong. I don't give a damn what those old fools says. Saratobi needs to replace his personal counsel for all they have done is bring this village to the edge of destruction more times than I care to think about. She tells them as she looks over the printout that is flowing out of her computer next to her. A mischievous slowly makes its way across her lips. This is just the thing I need. But this Naruto-kun will get what his parents left him and I will be able to carry out what I promised Kashina-chan Washu thinks to herself as she stands up and walks over to another table and highlights what she needs and leaves her lab to rain down hell onto this village of damn fools. If only she had her other loved ones. They would aid her in her personal battle and war she was going to go thought for this boy she has grown to love for the past 10 years of his short and sad little life. All she was grateful for was that she was able to make him smile just a little during that time. Hokage's Tower. Hokage's Office. Saratobi sits at his desk just looking at all the damn paperwork the civilian council and his elders are pushing on him just the day before Halloween. He was so wishing to have the say to take his grandson out and watch the children of the village run around and enjoy themselves as he used to in the days of old. In the days before he was forced back into office and before that horrible night a child of this village was forced to live with the most horrendous of burdens. Old man I have something I need to talk to you about. Said Washu as she comes up though his floor in a pink swirl of light with cherry blossom all around her. He looks up form his paperwork. You know Washu as your leader you must show me some degree of respect. He tells her as he pushes his paperwork aside. The day you stop using that crystal ball to spy on the hot spring, I will give you the proper respect. Washu tells him with a grin as she knows she has gotten him there. But when they are around others, she will respect him. But when they are alone like they are now she will be herself and put the old man in his place. Clearing his throat and looking over to the left and right corner of his office and he can tell that his two female Anbu were ready to kill him. By what he could feel of their killer intent for him. Washu what brings you to my office? For you never come unless I have to call for you or Naruto is hurt. He asks as he fells a little nervous now as he is worried for his blonde haired grandson. Washu grins at the old man before her. Naruto is fine. I am here to tell you what I found in his blood work and what I am about to tell you. She tells him as a wicked grin graces her lips. It will rock the very foundation of this village and you will have to give over my student's family scrolls to her son. I don't give a damn you believe he is too young. For after that attack in the forest of death. Naruchan has awoken three bloodlines. She tells him as she watches his face. The long forgotten pipe falls out of Suratobi's mouth as he looks at the pink haired chibi woman before him. He jade green eyes holding more power than he has ever seen before. What do you mean three bloodlines and are you sure I have to tell him now? He questions as he was hoping to push it off for as long as he could. Maybe even make Jiraiya tell him. I believe by this very full moon. Like in many of the Uzumakis in the past. His bloodline will awaken. For it is after the first full moon on their tenth year of life their bloodlines awaken. As for our little Naruto-chan. He hold three of the main family's bloodlines. One that everyone only believed that the Senjus only held. But I can tell you. That isn't true. For there was about 15 Yuzumakis in their history that held wood release and they all belonged to the main royal family. Then there are the chakra chains only believed that the woman of the main royal family could use but there were about three men that could use them as well. For they became the village priest or monks for they wanted to have children to pass on their bloodline limit to them as well. So it wouldn't end there. Then the rarest of them all the poison ivy bloodline release. With this bloodline limit Naruto becomes the very poison he can make from planets. Just from kissing him or just a touch, he can poison you, and there would be no way of knowing, and there isn't a way to counter it. Unless he does it himself for you. That is way I told you, he will need to know who his parents are, and as his godmother I want to move him into his family clan estate that the civilian council along with your elders have been trying to break into for years. Don't lie to me for I know the truth for I have been watching them and have stopped them many times in the past, and that Danzo doesn't care too much for me. And I swear to you if that mummy of a man doesn't stop trying to kidnap or poison the boy to make into his own weapon or tool. I will kill all the elders. There will be nothing you can do to stop me for I hold more power than you are our fire lord. For he is the figurehead I have running things for me as I am the one who calls all the shots from the shadows. Washu tells him as she was now standing before him as her adult self with some of her goddess power rolling off of her. Her power is so insane that all the hidden Anbu and the little spies that Danzo has hidden in the office all fall like flies. 
Saratobi looks to his far left and far right to see two rude Anbu laying on the ground, choking to breath as the two dolls that always appeared on Washu's laptop stand on their shoulders, holding needles with something glowing green in them. It appears your old friend has been spying on you once again, and this is the last time my two dolls will take care of them. For here is all that Danzo has done in the shadows to the point of trying to blackmail my puppet of a figurehead to gain more power and to overthrow you as Hokage, for he believes he is better suited than yourself. As well the files on your desk are under a jutsu that makes them copy themselves after every two hours if you don't finish the stack in the allowed time limit. This was set up to keep you busy so they can work in the shows to kill Naruto or kidnap him. She tells him as they both watch the stack of paperwork grow by 100. This all shocked Suratobi as he looked over the files that Washu handed him. It had listed all those in the bandage man's pocket. How did you get all of this? Asked Suratobi as he was pulled out of his shock. We gathered all of this. Said Doll One. We are just more than puppets and have free will to move around and do as we wish. Says Doll Two as they are now both on Washu's shoulder. They make the perfect spies for who's going to pay any mind to two dolls that a child left laying around or some root took away from a child Danzo bought or kidnapped. They are both easily overlooked and have been gathering intel for me for years. Enough to build the case that I give to you. Besides the files that my other puppet gave me. Washu tells him as there is a knock at the door. Enter. Said Saratobi as he is trying to get over his shock at what was all given to him. He has missed so much in his blind faith he had in his former teammates and the people he asked to help aid him in running this village. A village that at the end of the day. He held all the power over. Not them even though those fools believed to be more powerful than him. The second coming as the second god of all shinobi. Entering his office was Shikaku Nara, Inoichi Yamanaka, Commander Dragon, Ibiki Marino all important people and heads of his military branches. Washu smirked as she kept her adult form as she turned to the men. Good afternoon gentlemen. I am glad you all came when I called for you. She told them all as Saratopi looked at her questioningly. I sent for them for once I knew you had these files. You would be very busy with them doing your damn job and cleaning up the mess you allowed to happen all those years ago as you took the hat of Hokage. She growls out as Saratobi sits up straight and looks over at his four commanders. In this file are list of people who have been acting behind my back and of our Fire Lord's back. They are to be brought in and questioned and depending on what they have done. They will either go to prison or be sentenced to death. Said Saratobi as each man straightens and looks at their leader with shock. For they never knew if this day would come. I do want you to make a point and have their executions done in public to stop the next fool form, believing they are above my final word as the true Fire Lord said Washu as all the men look at her wide-eyed. They believe her to be some insane woman that Anko and the other ice queens just hung out with. But the air of power and royalty did come off of her in waves as she stood before them, and they could tell she was the one that did hold all the chips, and that the man they believed to be their fire lord was just some fool she allows to live the good life as she does as she wishes, as for that man has to report to her, and if by what they just seen. If he steps out of line. She will just end his life and replace him with the next fool wanting an easy job. Naruto and gang. Unknown to Naruto and the others their lives were going to change here shortly. But for now they all just wanted to have a good time and plan out what they wanted to do for Halloween. Anada I think you look lovely our water fairy. Said Yoshino as she finishes the girl's powder blue skirt. Anada blushes as she looks down at the Nara clan's mother. Then thank you. She told her with a bundle of nerves. Oh, sister. Please stop being so shy. She is right you do look lovely as a water fairy said Hanabi as she looks down at the dark angel costume that Chichi is helping her with. I'm going to look cool tomorrow for class. She says with a grin. Why yes the dark angel of our clan. Said Hanada with a giggle. As I am just a fairy that will protect and gift you with a wish. She tells her sister. Naruto looks over at the girls and smiles. I'm glad we are all going to have fun tomorrow night. He tells them as he puts on the pants and shirt that soon gives him. She put fake blood on them and had her Ninkin shred them up to look like he had transformed in them to a wild beast that is a slave to the full moon. I'm glad pup. All you kids do need to have some fun and cut loose. Said Tsum as she is grinning at the blonde before her. Ino comes walking into the room with the others as her mother follows behind her. She has on a white blouse with puffy sleeves and a crimson skirt and black stockings and black ninja heels. What finished her look off was the crimson hood cloak she is wearing with the basket in her hands. Her mother had pulled her hair into twin braids, and Ino was loving the look. She looked like a girl from a small farming village. Wow Ino you look great. If your parents have a costume contest, I think we will win. Said Naruto as he was now putting on a spiked collar with a chain leading from it. Something that was a little bit of a surprise to the others. 
The no smiles and blushes a little C2 that his shirt is unbuttoned, and the spiked collar and chain with the black jeans that have blood and cuts all over them, made him look hot and kind of like those skater boys she saw in a few of her fashion magazines. Thank you Naruto. She tells him as she walks past him to Hinata. My baby is growing up. Says Usagi with a single tear rolling down her cheek to the other mothers that they all share in knowing looks. Just as they finish everyone's costumes a knock is heard at the door. Outside of the Amanaka clan compound is Washu standing next to her as the third Hokage, as he has a silver hair and Boo holding a massive scroll standing behind him. Are you sure the boy is here? Asks Saratobi as he was a little nervous about what's to come. Washu looks down at him from the corner of her jade green eyes. Yes, he is with his friends. Why do you want to do this here and now? Why couldn't we do this in my office without everyone around? Questioned Saratobi as he didn't know how the mothers would react to this or the fact that he hid this from them for so long. Hey back is a bitch as the boss you're screwed. Said Washu as she just grins wickedly at the old man next to her. As he was going to speak the door opens. Oh hello Hokage-sama. Little Washu. Said Usagi as she steps aside to allow them into her home. Forgive me, but I wasn't expecting anyone to come by, and my husband isn't home right now. As I and the others are finishing the children's costumes for Halloween. She tells them as she leads them to the others in the living room. As they walk into the living room, they find Ino and Hinata on either side of Naruto, as they both chat with the boy, as the other boys watch on and chat among themselves. Kichi looks up from her cup of tea as she hears someone is walking into the living room with Usagi. Little Washu Sensei. Questions the larger woman. All the kids stop talking as they look to the newcomers and wonder what is going on for the Hokage looks a little green, and the pink hair woman has a devilish grin on her face. One that reminds them a lot of Naruto when he is up to something. Hey little Washu, old man. Said Naruto as all eyes go to the blonde hair boy in the room as he just addressed their village leader so casually. Hello, Naruto-kun. Said Saratobi with a grand fatally smile. Hello, my Naruto-chan. Said Washu as she walks up to the boy and pulls him into a bone-tight hug. Naruto smiled as he returned the bone-crushing hug. Um. Sensei it is a pleasure to see you and all. But what brings you here today? Asked Chichi as she was now walking over to her sensei. Washu smiles as she looks over at the Hokage, as the old man looks to have aged about a hundred years in just a few seconds. We came here looking for young Naruto. For it is time for him to learn the truth about everything and with his friends around. I felt it would better aid him to understand why I never told him about what I'm about to say now. Said Saratobi as all the women look at the Hokage in wonder as all the kids gather around their blonde hair friend as Washu had let him go, and he was now once again sitting with Ino and Hinata. Okay. But what is it that you need to tell me Jiji? Asked Naruto as he was a little scared. With a heavy heart and a sigh the old Hokage sat down before the boy. I am here to tell you about your parents and once as you understand why. I will tell you when it is just you and I about something else a burden that was thrust onto you at a very young age. He told the young boy before him. Inu as he held onto the very large scroll couldn't help but notice the two crests on it. Those two crests belonged to his late sensei and his beloved wife. He looked to Washu and to his leader. But with his mask on the Hokage couldn't see the questioning look as for Washu was able to see though it and nod her head to his unspoken question as she could see a tear slid under the mask of the young man behind the Hokage. What I am about to say to you Naruto is of most importance and once it is made known, I will have to make sure you are being taken care of better than what I have done for you thus far. Said Saratobi as all the mothers had a puzzled look as the children don't have a clue what's going on. Well maybe one does, but it's too troublesome. Troublesome. You're here to finally tell Naruto that his father was the fourth? Asked Shikamaru as the others looked at him with shock. Saratobi smiles with a slight chuckle. My boy in time you will surpass your father. But yes, I am here to tell Naruto his father is in fact was Minato Namikas and his mother was Kashina Uzumaki Namikas. They both passed on the night he was born. He said with a sad smile. Naruto looked shocked at his Jiji for never telling him until now. But why now? That was the question racing though out his mind. Why Jiji? Why tell me now? I have been asking you for years who my parents were. He almost yells but calms himself down as Ino pulls him into a hug. She slowly rubs circles on his back to calm him to make his ache and pain hurt a little less. I didn't want to tell you until I knew you were able to protect yourself. But something has happened and my hand was forced. Said Saratobi as he looks at Washu as he is now glaring at the pink hair woman. What has happened that you must now tell him of his mother? Question Yusagi as she wanted to know what is going on. I ran a rainbow of blood work on Naruchan here to test him for everything after he was bitten by a wolf in training ground 44. I wanted to make sure he would be alright. As I was running the test something interesting popped up and it was what made this all happen. Said Washu as all eyes are on her now. What was it? Asked Yoshino as she wanted to know. 
Young Naruto will be awakening three of his family's bloodline limits after the full moon. One of those bloodline limits can be very deadly. Said Saratobi as he tried to figure out who to explain it. The three I found were Chakra Chains, Wood Release, and finally Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy hasn't been seen since the first Shinobi World War and with him awakening it. I do hope Kashina brought everything about it with her. If not. I have my work cut out for me. For I will have to go through my library I brought with me from Yuzu before it fell. Said Washu as if she was talking about the rain. But isn't the wood release a Senju bloodline? Asked Choji as he was very confused. But the grin Washu answered him. No my dear boy. There were several Yuzumakis of the main royal family that could use that bloodline. Naruto here is just lucky to be able to use three of them. It has never happened before. Only once did one member was able to use two, but the second one was still very weak. So in time I am willing to bet Naruto here will surpass his predecessors. But that is if he is trained right. She finished as she was now glaring at Siratobi. The man felt so small and tiny under her weighted gaze. Tears slowly rolled down Naruto's cheeks. He had heard in history class about the two and how they went down fighting the rampaging fox. With Kishina's chains Minato was able to kill the beast. Is there anything else I need to know? Questioned Naruto not knowing if he could take any more. Washu was in front of him. Her eyes had softened a lot as she took his hand. I as named your godmother as for I was your mother's sensei and also from her village. She knew if anything would happen to her that I would take care of you. Something that I should have been allowed to do. But no the elders felt it wouldn't be wise to allow me an outsider near their weapon. She complained as Naruto looked at confused as how she was complaining about him being a weapon. What do you mean their weapon? Questioned Naruto. That is something that is classified and we will talk about later. Said Surabodi as he was now glaring at Washu. Who was just smiling. Also you have a godfather. He was Minato sensei and a pervert to boot. Said Washu as she seemed annoyed. Please don't allow that man around Naruto. Said Chichi. He is a good boy and we do not need Jiraiya making him into a mini him. Naruto looks at all the moms. But I want to know all the family I have left. He said with tears. Those baby blues made all the moms hearts melt right before him. Fine. But if he tries to make you do any peeping on anyone with him as he calls research let us know and we will handle him. Said Yoshino as she was now holding a cast iron frying pan. At the edge of the land of fire. Gureya is sitting in a tea house writing his book when he had a bad feeling run though his body. Feels like someone walked across my grave he thought to himself as he finished his book to send it off to his publisher. Back in Kanoha. I have sent word for Jiraiya to return to the village. Said Saratobi as he looked at the ladies in the room. He held up his hand before they could say anything to him. Naruto needs to begin his training in Fuinjutsu. For that was part of his clan's blood and he will surpass Jiraiya by the time he is a genin. He told them as the women nodded their heads to this. They remembered how Kashina was so skilled at it and how she showed Minato and even Jiraiya a thing or two about the art of sealing. Cool. Said Naruto as he is smiling. Naruto we will be moving you into your mother's family home. It is over by the old Senju estate. Said Washu as she is now grinning. I might have to send word to our other student Sunade. She thought out loud as she looks at Siratobi as the women look at Washu. Ah oh no. Washu Sama. Ho how is Lady Tsunade your student? Asked Tanada as she was wondering for the woman before her was very young. Washu grins at the young Hyuga heiress. My dear. I am over 3000 years old. But I look good for my age. She tells the kids. As everyone falls over freaking out. How in the hell are you so old? Yelled Naruto as he was shocked at the woman next to him. Washu just grinned. That is my little secret. She tells him with a wink. As everyone settled down and the mothers with the help of Washu, they finished all the kids' outfits and went home for dinner. Naruto tonight you will be staying with me. Said Washu as she had taken the scroll form into a couple of hours of ago, as he needed to have a long talk with his leader about being lied to about his sensei's son not being dead like he was originally told that horrible night. Yes yeah, sure Washu Bachan. Said Naruto as now Washu was crying big fat tears as they streamed down her cheeks. Why don't you call me Washu Nichan? Washu asks Naruto as he grins at her. He returns her grin with his own devilish grin. You said you're older than Jiji that makes you Bachan. He tells her as she pouts at him. I'm not going to win, here am I. Washu asked him. Nope. Was all Naruto saying as he runs out of the house. He is ready to return home with his godmother. His new Bachan. Halloween Morning Ninja Academy. Naruto walks up to the smell of food being cooked coming from the kitchen. He slowly sits up in bed and looks around the white room he is in. The bed is very soft and there is a desk in the corner with his clothing folded on top of it and next to it was his costume that he is going to wear that day. Slowly he gets up and looks up at the clock to see it is only 7.30 am. I've got two hours before I need to be in class. He says to himself as there is a knock on the door. Naruto. 
came the soft voice of the girl that lives with Washu. Breakfast is ready. She tells him though the door. Okay thank you Sasami-chan. Calls out Naruto as he jumps out of bed and goes to the bathroom that is connected to his bedroom to get a nice hot shower before he goes down for breakfast. After about 20 minutes Naruto walks down the stairs to find Sasami and Washu having breakfast. Morning Bachan. Morning Sasami-chan. Said Naruto. The now named Sasami giggles as she watches Washu fall forward and almost hit her head on the table. Morning Naruto-kun. Said Sasami as she smiles at him. Morning Naruto-chan. Says Washu as she goes back to eating her meal. Naruto sits down as Sasami has already set him a place at the table and he begins eating his breakfast. Inside his mindscape. These two women are more powerful than my father. If they were around they might have stopped his accursed mother. Said Kurama as he watches the girl with pink eyes and teal hair going down her back in two ponytails. Yes, but the one called Washu can be dangerous to us. Well Moriya she already knows about you. For she might know how to stop me. For I know she will not kill the boy. The werefox says out loud in worry. Kurama moves his crimson eyes to the sad little creature before him. I wouldn't worry. With all I have done with you. She will not be able to take you out of him. For you are now part of his DNA. He tells it as he goes back to watching the others though the boy's eyes. Tonight we will see how this boy will handle his true darkness. Said the werefox. Kurama looks at the black hair Naruto who's now just laying behind him sleeping. His bindings had finally come off of him just a few minutes ago. Yet tonight. Who will win? The light or the darkness? He asks himself as he lays back down. Naruto and the others. After school we will go quickly to the old Uzumaki estate and unlock it and set you up there. Said Siratobi as he had dropped by as everyone was having breakfast. Unless you wish to stay with Lady Washu. He said as an afterthought. Naruto looked at the old man he called his Jiji and to the pink hair woman that he now calls his Bachan. I would like to stay at my clan estate for now. To get used to it. Maybe later on Washu Bachan and Sasami-chan can move in with me. If they want to. He said as he looked down shyly. After you unlock the place, I'll get to cleaning it and do some shopping for you Nari-chan. So don't worry about it and have fun with your friends. Said Sasami as she smiled softly and pulled out some paper and pencil to make him a shopping list. She already knew what he liked and what he was able to cook. For she had given him cooking lessons off and on for the past few years since she met him when he was four years old. She saw him as the little brother she always wanted. It also made her miss Ryooki and the others even more. But Naruto did help with that empty feeling of missing them. Thank you Sasami-chan. Thank you both so much for all the help you have given me. Said Naruto as he was grinning now. Saratobi handed over a checkbook over to Sasami. Here this will cover all your shopping. For I believe he will need many things and I know you will know what he needs. I will have Anbu pack up his place and meet everyone at the old estate after he is finished at the academy. He said as he also pulled out several storage scrolls and handed them over to the girl for, she knew she could get her shopping done early and not worry about anything else and just get to work. That is all fine and dandy but. I but be part of Naruto's training for I would love to study his bloodlines and see if we are able to get it that it will pass down to every generation and not skip like it normally does in the Uzumaki family. Said Washu as she was drooling at the idea of studying the young boy. I am no one's test subject. I am a human and you can help me train. Said Naruto as he was now glaring at Washu for even thinking about treating him as a test subject. Washu did blush a little. I'm sorry Naruchan. It is the scientist in me that I want to get to the bottom of life's greatest mysteries. I even know the secret to the one that his old student wants and I'll never tell. She said with a mischievous twinkle in her eye as she looks over at Siratobi as the old man went wide-eyed for, he knew what the thing his old student wanted the most and this crazy pink hair woman before him knew it and she would never tell. He prayed to Kami his student never found out about it. For it would be war or hell to pay. Either he didn't want to deal with it. Naruto looked up at the clock and saw it was already 9 am. Geez I need to get going. I'm going to be late. He cried as he jumped up and Sasami handed him his lunch. Thank you. He said as he ran out the door as he hinged into a werewolf and ran down the street to the ninja academy. Inu followed behind him today along with Nico. For they were to make sure no one attacked him in his Halloween costume, for it was very realistic looking, and some stupid villager might think the Kayubi took the boy over and is turning him into a beast. Naruto saw his friends waiting for him by the old tree near their classroom window as he runs up to them. Sorry guys. He said as he grins at everyone. Ino looks him over and grins. You're missing your collar. She tells him as she pulls it out of her basket and helps him put it on with the chain leading down it. She grins as she keeps hold of it. All the other students watch the two blondes in shock for Ino had dumped Sasuke Chiha for the class clown and they wouldn't wrap their minds around it. Sasuke walks up to them as he is dressed as a ronin samurai with a grass hat covering his face. That is a fitting look for you loser. 
you make a good pet for someone. He told Naruto as he is smirking. Naruto smirks looking at him. Hey at least the ladies will always be pleased with me as their pet. As the others laugh. Naruto never knew when to just not to open his mouth, but he didn't care. Whatever loser. I'll win our class costume contest. Like I do every year. Sasuke tells Naruto. Naruto looks him up and down and grins. I don't think so. I think Ino-chan and I have you beat this year. He tells the annoying boy as he turns his back to his friends and grins and winks at Ino. Ino blushes as Hinata walks up to the group. Sasuke storms off not liking being ignored by anyone. Troublesome. Said Shikamaru as he looks at the two blondes. I think he does have a thing for Naruto. Says Choji as everyone turns green at the idea and both Ino and Hinata get a dark look in their eyes. Both sharing one thought. He will not have my Naruto-kun. I will end him if he even tries. All the boys but Naruto step away from the two girls as a dark purple aura surrounds them as they appear to have demons standing behind them. I can always give him to Washu Bachan as her new test subject to get me out of it. Naruto laughs as he looks at the clock over the front doors. But we better get going to class the bell will be going off soon and the sooner we are inside and seated together the better Sasu can't sit next to me. He tells them as they all nodded their heads and head inside the ninja academy. From the shadows Inu and Niko are both laughing their asses off at what just happened. My poor little Neru-chan. Said Niko as she felt bad for the boy. I agree but this will be funny to tease him about when he begins to date or when he gets married. Said Inu as both he and Niko plan to be around for those important times in his life. The bell had rung and Aruka and Mizuki had both walked into the classroom. Good morning class. Said Aruka as Mizuki ignored the brats in favor of his coffee. It was an odd sight this morning. All the fangirls who would be normally fighting over Sasuke all sat quietly looking up at Ino as she sat next to Naruto holding his chain and grinning at them. They had issues not seeing their leader not fighting with Sakura over who's sitting next to their Sasuke-kun. As Sakura was next to the raven hair boy dressed as a princess. As all the other fangirls had the same idea as they hoped Sasuke would dress as a prince this year. Iruka followed the girl's line of sight and saw Ino and who he believed to be Naruto sitting next to each other in a matching Halloween couple's outfit as their friends sat all around them in their own costumes. Mizuki also looked up to where Iruka was looking and went all wide-eyed. Did the demon finally take over the boy? He asked himself as he was having issues with how the boy is dressed. Naruto who made your costume? Asked Iruka. Naruto grinned at his teacher. Well the outfit is from Chichi Akimichi's store. But Tsum's partner shredded up the clothing and everything else is a hinge. He told his teacher. Like a loser like you can hold a hinge all day. Said Sasuke acting all high and mighty. Naruto looks over at the last Ichiha. I have a large chakra reserves I am able to hold this for two days if need be and I am able to push this longer if I have to. He tells everyone. Iruka and Mizuki look a little shocked. What do you mean you have a larger chakra reserves? Question Iruka. My Dr. Washu explained to me. As I am the last of what we know of the royal Yuzumaki bloodline. The Yuzumakis had larger than normal reserves that an academy student would have chakra matching that of a low chunin. But she told me that with all the training I do and all the running I do from Anbu. I am already at low jonin and doing simple low chakra jutsus will be harder for me. So when it comes to learning the clone jutsu I will have to learn a different one. For that one I will never be able to do until my chakra control is at the same level as a surgeon which I don't think will happen for a very long time. Said Naruto as everyone looks shocked at him. Thank you for telling me that Naruto for we are going to begin studying the clone tomorrow. I will have to speak to Lord Hokage for a clone that you will be able to do. Said Aruka. How can a loser have that much power? He shouldn't have that much power. I need that power. Raged Sasuke in his head. Cool. Said Naruto as he turned to his friends as they went back to what they had been talking about. Just then there was a knock at the door. Aruka was a little confused as what was going on. Today was going to be just a fun day for the kids. Letting them play eat and just have a good time all around. He goes over to the door to find all the mothers and even Washu and Sasami, standing there with food and other things in their hands, as their husbands looked annoyed as they had the heavy dishes in their hands. Hello, Aruka kun We are here to drop off all the food early for the kids' party. For we have a lot to do ourselves. Said Washu as she smiled at the man before her. Hello, Washu-sama. Said Aruka as he stepped aside as he motioned for Mizuki to move aside as well for all the women were coming in in their desk and all the free tables are being taken over. They all came in and set up for the children as Washu and Sasami unsealed all the Halloween decorations they worked on late last night for the kids party and set them up and Washu even set up a projector with a projecting ghost and monsters that looked so real that the kids freaked out when one came so close to them. The fangirls shrieked and jumped on Sasuke as he tried to get away from them. But it was too late. It was a Sasu kun dog pile. 
We will have someone pick everyone up for us. Said Sasami as she smiles at both teachers. Naruto ran down the stairs to his family and smiled up at the two. Thank you Bachan and Nichan. He told the two as he hugged them. Washu took her adult form and hugged Naruto pulling him into her large chest barring his face into them. All the boys looked shocked even the fathers looked shocked as Aruka blushed and Mizuki had a perverted smirk on his face. If she is so easy with him, I could be warming her bed soon, Mizuki thought to himself as he watched on. Washu that is enough. You're embarrassing him in front of his friends. Sasami scolds her goddess sister and friend. Washu lets go of the boy as he falls to the boy as he falls to the boy with a loud thud as he was almost out of breath. Sorry. He is just so cute at times. She tells Sasami as she is smiling a little sheepishly. Let's go Washu we promised Usagi to help her with decorations for her Halloween party and I still need to get a lot of shopping done as well. Sasami tells her as she is a little tired. The teenage girl just smiles at everyone as all the fangirls and other girls just blush as they see how beautiful she is as the boys all want to follow her around all day and help her. Isagi looks over at Aruka and smiles softly. Our husbands will return when the children get out of class to pick up everything for us. She tells the young teach. Aruka bow to her. Thank you everyone for all the food that you have brought for the children's party. He tells all the mothers grateful for all their help. We are happy to help also it gives us something to do. Said Yoshino as she smiles over at her son and his friends. Also we make sure none of the food has been poisoned, add Chichi mentally as she looked over at the children and at Naruto mostly with a sad smile. Aruka caught the knowing look and nodded his head. For the first year they had their Halloween party three children got sick for they took the plate a civilian mother fixed for Naruto. For she poisoned it and she had to tell them what she used to save the children and she went to prison for what she did. But the sad thing was she didn't care that her son almost died along with his two buddies. So some believed she used Naruto as bait as she might have been planning to kill her family to be free of her asshole of a husband and her son that was slowly becoming like him. All the kids smiled at the mothers and split off into their groups. The fangirls had made cookies and treats for Sasuke. But they didn't know the boy really didn't care for sweets. If they knew anything about him. They would have known he loved tomatoes. Alright kids have fun we will have this free day today. But tomorrow we are going to be working doubly as hard to make up for today. Said Aruka as all the kids groan at their teacher. Azuki grabbed a couple of cookies that Sasami made and sat back down with his coffee and pulled out his magazine he was reading earlier for before class and went back to it. He didn't care as long as no one bothered him he didn't give a damn. Naruto fixed himself a plate of nachos as he went back to his seat as Ino returned with her own plate and a drink. Naruto pouted as he forgot his drink. Oh man I forgot to get something to drink. He whined as he was standing up as Hinata returned with her plate and two drinks. H here you go Naruto kun. I I got you a drink. Said Hinata a little nervous as she smiled at him. Thank you, Hinata chan. Said Naruto as he took the soda from Hinata. Washu had made a killing when she introduced soda to this world for, they had nothing like that here, and the kids and teens really liked it. As the day went on, they played games, ate treats and just pigged out. Ino was even eating more than normal. She figured if she was going to go after Naruto, he wouldn't want her to die after he had told her before it was bad for her and that she should eat and just be happy with who she is. With working out she would burn it all off anyways. It was already the end of the day and at the front gates waiting for Naruto was Washu, Sasami, and the third Hokage, along with the others' parents waiting for their children. Hey Bachan, Nichan, and Jiji-chan. Said Naruto as he ran up the three of them. They smiled down at the boy before them. The shinobi parents just smile at the boy as the civilian parents glare at the boy. Do women whisper to each other? I don't know how a woman in her stand is around a demon like that said woman one. It must have her brainwashed or something to have her around him, said woman two as Washu's two little dolls appear on the women's shoulders. You know that is it not right to call a child those names? Asked doll one. We can tell the fire lord on you. Said doll two. Like the fire lord would care about a demon like that. Growled out woman one. Well I don't care about him. Said Washu as he appeared before the two women as she was glaring at them. Her jade eyes frozen over as she looked deep into them. Just snapping her fingers Anbu appear around the two women. You will meet Ibiki and Anko. Have a nice Halloween. She tells them as her two dolls jump onto Naruto as he was looking sad. Bachan. You know you could have just left them alone. It doesn't bother me whatsoever that they don't like me. Said Naruto as he looked away from his family and friends. You shouldn't have to allow them to act that way Naruto-kun. Said Sasami as she is kneeling before the boy with her bright pink eyes looking into his baby blue eyes. He just slowly nods his head to this. How about we go look at your new house and then you can have fun with your friends. Said Yusagi as she was smiling at Naruto as Hanabi was standing at the woman's side smiling at the blonde hair boy. She like how the boy was still so kind even though people are so mean to him. 
He reminded her of her big sister. Naruto nodded his head as they all followed the third Hokage to the Uzumaki estate. Naruto walked up next to his Jiji. Hey Jiji, I have a question. He said as the old man looked down at him. Yes, Naruto-kun. Asked Saratobi. Didn't my father have his own estate? For didn't the Namakiza clan as well? Asked Naruto as he was looking a little confused and puzzled by this. For he was only told about his mother's. Well your father clan's compound is outside the village walls. It is hidden, it is where you were born. Said Saratobi as he smiled down at Naruto. Naruto looked shocked at this. I wasn't born inside the village walls. He asked. No you were not. But I will have to explain that to you later. We will go to your father's compound once we are done going though your mother's. For I know Minato didn't take everything to your mother's for you. So I know we will have to move things over. Unless you would wish to live there once you are old. Said Saratobi as he was studying the blonde's face as he was looking lost and thought about this. Well I think I might like to go out there to do a lot of my personal training. For I believe I will have people trying to get in my way while I train within the village training grounds. Said Naruto as he pulled himself out of his own thoughts. Troublesome. Naruto you do know that all compound do have private training grounds that no one will be able to get at you in them. Said Shikamaru with a sigh. That is true. Your parents had blood seals on the gates of the Uzumaki compound that only the ones that have their blood key to it would be able to enter the place. Said Shikaku as he looked at the little blonde before him. Will I really have to learn more about Fuinjutsu? Said Naruto as he was now bouncing around everyone. Washu smiled over at Sasami sheepishly. I could have allowed you into the compound earlier for I am key to the place. She told her young friend and got a sister. That is alright Washu it has been 10 years since you have been there. So I'm not upset with you and I have everything seal away so nothing will go bad. Said Sasami as she smiled at the pinkette next to her. They had finally arrived at the large black iron gate surrounded by stone walls with vines all over. Naruto saw the swirl that is on all the flank vest that the Chunin and Jonin wear on the iron gates. That is your clan symbol and the symbol of your fallen village. Said Saratobi as he had a sad smile as he remembered all the friends he had lost in the 2SWW. Oh wow. What did my dad's clan symbol look like? Questioned Naruto as he was thinking maybe of mixing both clan symbols. Both Washu and Saratobi had to stop and think for a moment as they couldn't place it for a moment. You know I can't really remember. Said Saratobi as he looked over at Washu for she might know. Washu looked over at the others. I think it had something to do with the lighting or flames. I don't really remember myself. She told them. Oddly the others in the group that serviced alongside Minato couldn't remember either. I guess I'll go over to dad's tomorrow after class to find out. Said Naruto as he looked at Saratobi and Washu. We could do that for it will help you find out if there is anything out there that could help you in your training. Said Washu as she patted Naruto's head as he ran away from her. Little brat. She grumbles to herself as she is pouting at the young future werefox before her. Naruto just laughed as he ran away as he had already opened the large iron gates as he pushed his chakra and blood into them for he understood the seal as he looked at it and was now making his way to his new home. Did Naruto read that seal without someone telling him what to do? Asked Choji as a chip fell from his lips. Yeah he did. Said Ino as she was shocked as she looked up at all the parents for answers. It is in his blood. Said Shikaku. Both his parents were masters in that art as well as his godfather. He told them as they all nodded their heads. Naruto was standing at the front doors waiting for everyone for he needed keys to get in, for he had already broken the blood seal and was annoyed as they had been moving too slow. Come on. Move it I want to get in and look around before we start trick-or-treating. He whined as he pulled on his hair dancing around everyone. Patience young one. That is something you must learn to be a strong shinobi and someday be Hokage as that is still your dream. Said Saratobi as he looked down at Naruto who had a large smile on his face as he was looking up at the old man standing next to him. You know I'll be the greatest Hokage ever and I'll surpass you and my father and those that came before you too. Said Naruto as he pumped his fist into the air. The clan heads and their wives couldn't help but laugh as their children couldn't help but believe in the boy's dream and as future heads of their clans, they would do all in their power to make sure it would come to pass. Even if Kiba had to hound his sister when she took over. The old mansion was unlocked as Naruto rushed into the sitting room and saw the place was still pretty clean and there on the fireplace was a large portrait of his heavily pregnant mother and his father standing next to each other with large smiles on their faces. Wow it is true Kashina truly did hate dusting. Said Yoshino as she looked around. I need these anti-dust seals as soon as Naruto begins to learn how to make them. She said as she looked at the blonde boy standing in the sitting room just looking up at his happy parents before him. Tears had slowly began rolling down his cheeks by this time as all the mothers and girls had seen this. 
Bino was the first to pull him into a hug as Hinata was pushed by her younger sister to join the other blonde in hugging the boy as her little sister was behind her. Man he is a clone of his father besides a few differences. Said Kiba as he was looking at Naruto and back to Minato and Kashina. He has his mother's eye shape and nose and the rest is all his father. The feral boy had notice. Sasami walked up behind Naruto and the girls. Why don't you go with the others and I'll make sure this place is ready for you when you return. Washu and I will walk you home tonight and get you settled in. She told the boy as he nodded his head. Okay. Come on guys we can explore this place on the weekend. Said Naruto as it was time for them all to be having fun. He wiped his face on his jacket sleeve and looked at the others smiling. Thank you. He whispered to the girls as they smiled at him. All the kids ran off as Asami looked at everyone with a polite smile. I am glad you are all here for him. But I know you still have things to do before your party tonight Usagi. I will handle things here. So, please do not worry about a thing and I will be by at 7 to help with anything else you may need. She told Usagi and the others. You are an angel Sasami. We wouldn't know what to do without you. Said Usagi as she smiled at the teenage girl. But you are right. We still have a lot to do and husbands to get dressed before the party tonight and in Tsum's case, she has to hunt down that boyfriend of hers. She said with a giggle as the feral woman was now blushing. This was the night everyone was going to meet this mystery man that she has been dating for a while. Some believe it might have been an old boyfriend that she truly loved but broke up with for she had to marry that bastard her clan had choose for her. A worthless beta that pranced around as an alpha. Washu ushered everyone out of the mansion as Asami had gotten to work with some of Washu little helpers that she didn't want anyone to see. It was pretty easy. All she had to do was wash all the bedding and set up the room that was set up as Naruto's nursery. She didn't have the heart to touch it. It was something that Naruto needed to do. For it was meant for him when he was born. So she moved his name plate over to the guest room across from the nursery and put a new bed and bedding for him. Had her little helps take the refrigerator out of the house and replace it with a new one. For she opened it and something was living in there and she was too scared to touch it. So that was sent to Washu to play with. It only took her 4 hours to get done and it was already 6 pm, so she made her way home and got changed she put on her Jurai princess dress on with her royal crown. Before the mirror stood Sasami or Tsunami the woman she will become when she turns 2200 years old for now, she was only 1700 years old and still was able to just be herself. But Washu had told her that her and Tsunami would become one and she wouldn't lose herself. All she would do was gain Tsunami's goddess's powers and join herself as one of the three goddesses. But still she held a little fear. But one couldn't blame the young girl for her upside down triangles had begun to turn to circles on her 1700th birthday and the fear slowly began to set in more than ever. Naruto and his friends had a blast trick or treating across the village. Villagers didn't have a clue that it was Naruto dressed as the werewolf being led by the young Yamanaka heiress. They had all believed it to be one of her cousins dressed up for her to lead around. All the kids had also made sure to never use Naruto's name as they got near any of the house. They just called him Naru. Making many to think he was a girl. With how baggy his outfit was no one could tell for all the hair he had all over him and he also had long hair for this costume. Man, I'm having a blast. Said Naruto as he was grinning and looking at all the candy he had gotten. Yeah man this is awesome. We are making a killing this year. I think we need to do more planned group costumes next year. Said Kiba as he was grinning now. Th that would be a lot of fun. Said Hanada feeling a lot less shy around her friends. I want to be part of that too. Said Hanabi as she looked at the older kids. They all smiled at her. We wouldn't leave you out Hanabi-chan. Said Ino as she is smiling at the girl. The sky was finally getting darker. The moon was slowly coming out. But it was behind a few clouds that lingered in the night sky. Within Naruto. Time is drawing near. His dark half is slowly being to awaken. Said Kurama as his tails now held onto the dark side of Naruto. For all the bindings had fallen off of the boy just moments ago. But the great fox still wanted the boy to have some fun. For this might be his last night as himself. For tomorrow he was going to be reborn anew. They just didn't know if he would be the light or the darkness. I just hope he is stronger than his darkness. Said the werefox virus as it was fixing things around Naruto, it had gotten into the boy's memories and felt bad for him. For he had seen all the darkness and loneliness the boy had gone though, and still his heart shined with the bright light of hope. It was something rare for it to see, and it wanted to see it live on and make something better of the curse it has spread though the young boy's body. Only time will tell. Was all that Kurama said as he looked at the darkness open his eyes and glare at the demon fox that held him at bay. Let me go. It is my time to be free and that weak thing walking around freely to be chained up. Growled out dark Naruto. Shut up brat. I do not take orders from you. 
I am the one who gives the orders around here, and you will wait until 2am for the curse to take hold of the boy, and that is when you will meet him and have your little fight. Growled out Karama leaning very close to the dark side of Naruto. Making sure to show the boy his teeth. All he needed to do was just open his both and take one little bite, and it would be over. He would just take the darkness within him, and it would be gone form the boy forever. Dark Naruto just stayed quiet for it knew that this fox wasn't playing around, and his fate was within those tails that held him now at bay. Yamanaka Compound. It was 10 minutes to 9 pm, and all the kids began making their way back to the Yamanaka Compound. As they walked past the last bar leading to the clan district, they saw a group of men made up of civilians and shinobi alike coming out of the bar drunk and holding sake bottles and beer bottles. Let's find that demon brat and have some fun. Said one of the civilian men to the others. The others just yell in agreement. Children keep moving and I'll get Hanabi home after I make sure you are at Yamanaka-sama estate. Said Ko as he blocked Naruto form the side of the men and ushered the children quickly to Ino's home. Once they got there Ino's father stood outside waiting for them. Ko walked up to the clan head and spoke with him. Yamanaka-sama. I have gotten the children here safely. But please have Naruto return with several trusted people, for there are people already out hunting for him. He told the clan head. Thank you for telling me. I'll go with Lady Washu and Sasami to make sure the boy makes it home safely. Said Inoichi as he smiled at Ko for the heads up. Ko bowed and picked up a sleepy Hanabi and took off back to the Hayuga compound that wasn't too far from where they all stood now. Well children did you have fun? Question Inoichi as he smiled at his daughter and the other children. Yeah we had W blast dad. Naruto and I made a killing in candy for everyone love our costumes. Ino told her father as Naruto grinned at the blonde hair man. Yeah it was fun, but I need to give my candy to Washu Bachan to check over for me. Said Naruto as Inoichi nodded his head to this. That would be a great idea. I believe it would be good for all you children to allow us to check your candy out. For we have had some people put bad things into the candy in past years and we want to make sure it is safe before you all eat it. He told the kids as they all groaned and handed over their candy bags. Each bag had their names. But Naruto held on to his for Washu was going to get it from him. Once inside all the kids found their parents or in Naruto's case, he looked for Washu and Sasami. Washu brightened up as she saw Naruto walk in with the others. She saw his candy bag was overflowing with candy and knew she would have to seal it away and check it in the morning, for he would be over bright and early for it. Bachan, Nichan. Called Naruto as he ran up to the two women that have played a big part in his short life. Hey, Naruchan. Said Washu as she took his candy bag and put it in a scroll she had on her. Sasami hugged Naruto. Hello, Neru-kun. She tells the boy as she lets him go. The house is ready and I have a dinner in the fridge for you and your lunch is already made as well in there. Thank you, Ni-chan. Naruto with a huge grin. That's something eat Neru-chan. Said Washu as she heard his stomach growl. He looked at them sheepishly and nodded his head as she ran off to get some food. Washu watched him run off as her eyes moved over to the fathers walking over to her and Sasami. Lady Washu. Said Inoichi. Inoichi-kun said Washu as she smiled at the man and took another drink from her red wine as she was dressed as a sedative witch. I was just informed that it would be best to escort you and Sasami when you return young Naruto home. Said Inoichi as he looked worried. But the Sai Sasami looked over at Naruto as he was having an eating contest with Choji and Kiba. It never fails. Those fools have too much to drink and they wanted to blame their life problems on the poor boy for a burden that he had no say in. She voices out loud as she turns back to look at the men before her and Washu. That will be fine. Said Washu. It will be good to have you strong men with us to scare those fools away. She finishes as she spots Tsum walk into the ballroom with a tall and stocky man on her arms as he was dressed all in black with a mask on his face. Ibiki. I should have known. She whispers to herself as she grins as the men. Well gentlemen I must make my way to your wives for we have much to talk about. She tells them as Shikaku looks to where she was looking and saw who walked in. Troublesome. Was all he said as he pointed with his chin for the other men to see what he was looking at. Do you see what I see? Questioned Washu to the other ladies as they seen Tsum just walk in. Yes. Who do you think he is? Asked Chichi as she was on edge to learn who this masked man was. I'm not sure. Said Yoshino as she was trying to study him for across the room. Isagi narrowed her eyes as she was trying to think of all the men that she had ever seen Tsum with and only one came to mind as her eyes widened. It can't be. She says to herself as the others look at her as Washu is grinning like a mad woman. Oh yes, it is. She has gotten back with her old boyfriend. Said Washu as she couldn't help but grin like a mad woman. Ishino, Chichi look at the two women confused as they try to figure it out. Who was the last man she was dating before she was forced to marry that jackass of a so-called alpha? Asked Yusagi as she saw it click in the other two women's mind. Ibiki. The one that she truly loved. 
said Yoshino as Shichi nodded her head to this. Tsum sees her friends and takes her date's hand. Come on. I want you to meet them. She tells him with a grin. If you say so. The masked man says with his gruffy voice. As Tsum makes it over to her friends all the men move quickly over to the women to make sure if that was really who they thought they heard Washu say it was. Hey nice party. Said Tsum as she is grinning at Yusagi. Thanks. But who's your date Tsum Chan? Asks Yusagi as she is looking at her friend with amusement in her eyes. Oh quiet playing with her. I know you all have figured it out. Said the masked man as he took off his mask. All the men looked on with shock for they wouldn't have figured Ibiki would have taken her back after what happened between them. I must say I didn't expect this. Said Hisashi as he looks at Ibiki as he was shocked himself at this. Well like they say. One does what the heart wants and I wanted this wild woman back and I got her back. Said Ibiki shocking everyone even more. Well I better be hearing wedding bells between you two this time. Said Washu as she is now grinning like a mad woman. On whose orders? Asked Ibiki as he was glaring at the pinkette. Well your fire lords. No not that puppet I have running things for me. Says Washu as if she is talking about the weather. Washu allow them to date and see if it leads to that. Scolded Sasami as she was standing behind Washu the whole time. Washu pouts. You're not fun Sasami-chan. Whines Washu as she is now pouting. The others just laugh at her as they all just talk and have a good time. It was already 1am when Naruto was walked home along with Washu and Sasami to their home. Washu had locked his gate so no one would slip in and the house was already keyed that if your chakra wasn't in the door lock or blood you couldn't get in. So he was very safe. Naruto changes into his PJS and crawls into bed. Man today was a blast. I hope every day is like today. He says to himself as he pulls on his goofy looking sleeping hat and falls to sleep. Inside Naruto's mindscape. Naruto walks up in the forest. Huh. How did I get here? He asks no one but himself as he is looking around as he sees a golden tail of an animal running. He chases after it until he comes face to face with a large cave with large golden gates before it and crimson eyes within it. The time has finally come for use to meet little one. Said a dark voice from within the cavern. Who's there? Called Naruto as he was getting scared. Don't be scared of him boy. Said a voice from behind Naruto. He quickly spun around to come face to face with the werefox standing on two legs looking at him. Naruto takes a step back falling back onto his butt. Who are you? He asks with fear lacing his voice. I am the curse you were given that night you were bitten in the forest of death. Said the werefox. What do you mean curse? Question Naruto not sure what is going on. That night you were in the forest the thing that bit you was a werewolf. But thanks to the biju sealed within you, he has saved you from becoming a mindless beast that would hunt and kill anything. He is allowing to keep your human mind while you transform on full moons or when your emotions are heightened to the point you lose control. You will turn into me. Said the werefox as Naruto looked at it with disbelief. No way. I can't. And what do you mean I have what did you call sealed into me? Question an even more frightened Naruto. The night you were born I was ripped out of your mother and set loose on the village. But before I was set upon the village, I was placed under a Jinjutsu from those accursed eyes of that Damachiha clan. Came the dark voice from with the cavern cage. But on my birthday the nine-tailed fox at Naruto never finished saying what he was going to say, as it now clicked why everyone hated him and why the villagers would attack him on his birthday and why he has mostly been alone besides those very few people that loved him and wanted to be in his life. I see you have figured it out. Said Kurama as he was now standing in the light that Naruto can't see his nine tails dancing behind him and his large crimson eyes just watching him. So, you didn't want to attack the village? Asked Naruto. Not yelling or freaking out about having the demon within him. He just wanted to know why this happened and what led to this. I was fine sealed away within your mother. I wasn't planning to break free. I was just wanting to sleep and just wait until the time came when I would be sealed within you once you were older or if she had any other child. But that plan was smashed when a masked man with a mask and a single crimson eye attacked and killed everyone in the cave that you were born in and tried killing you with attaching explosion tags to your blanket if your father didn't step away from your mother. For she was his goal for she was already too weak from birthing you and losing way too much blood. Karama told the young boy. Naruto was now sitting in front of the cave with tears rolling down his cheeks. The fox before him wasn't planning to hurt anyone. He was forced. So he used me against my parents to get to you? He asked. Karama nodded his head. Yes. The bastard had thrown you out the opening of the cave and your father used his bloodline to rush to you and take you to the awaiting nurse and safety. When he had returned, I was already free and running around. What I remember seeing of your mother was she was bleeding heavy as she was stabbed in the belly and then I don't remember nothing until I'm being pulled into you and my large claws sticking out of both your parents. 
During the time I was still under the Jinjutsu I tried killing you, and they used themselves as shields. As your mother was already on death's door and for your father. They used the death god seal on you and sealed me into you. He had tried to split me into two halves, but something happened, and I was kept whole. What I'm not sure for a shining white light and two goddess stopped the death god and told him to not take my other half. He agreed to them as he held some type of fear, and then I awake here several years later. He tells the boy. Naruto. Said the werefox. Naruto turns around to look at the werefox. There is another reason you are here for. Tonight before you make your first transformation under your first full moon. You must face your darkness. Said the werefox as a black hair Naruto comes out of Kurama's cage. Hello, my light and weak self. Said dark Naruto as he is grinning wickedly at the young blonde. Naruto narrows his eyes at his dark half. Hello. I guess we have to do this don't we? He asked. Yes we do you fool. This isn't a game. For whoever wins here tonight will live on as the other fades away into nothingness. Growls out Dark Naruto. Naruto looks at him puzzled. We can't live without one or of the other. The light needs the darkness. For we are each other's yin and yang. So even though if I win here tonight, I will always have a small part of darkness for it leaves within us all. As the light always shines in the darkness no matter what. He tells Yami Naruto. Shut up you fool. You do not know what you are talking about. Growls Yami Naruto as he charges at Naruto ready to attack. Hirama sits back in his cage smirking. He is wise way beyond his eyes. I believe those two women have a hand in that he thinks to himself as he watches what's about to happen. As Yami Naruto is pulling his fist back to punch Naruto. Naruto quickly ducks under the hit and pulls Yami Naruto into a hug. I'm sorry Yami Naruto. I am so sorry for bottling everything up. For never allowing it all out. I guess I thought it was better to hold it all in and never deal with it. He tells his other half. Yami Naruto grows wide-eyed as he begins hitting Naruto on his bat as tears begin to flood his eyes. It hurts so much. Everything they did to you as it hurts so much. Why didn't you fight back? Why didn't you let the Kayubi out and just let him finish the job he begun? He cried with heavy tears. I couldn't. I couldn't allow us to become like them. I couldn't allow the darkness to swallow us whole and twist us. Make us into what they wanted. I didn't want to become the monster they wanted me to be. Said Naruto as he allowed Yami Naruto cry. As Yami Naruto cried he felt lighter and slowly he began to become one with Naruto, as the bright shining light that came from Naruto made his dark heart pure once more. There now just stood Naruto as he was now whole with himself. Both Kurama and the werefox watched with shock. For they never seen anything like this in their whole lives. Well mostly Kurama for he has been around for a very long time. The signs of a true alpha. Said the werefox as a crescent moon with a star in the center appears on Naruto's forehead. That marking. Gasped the werefox. You are of the original bloodline. How could this be? He questioned as he looked at Kurama. Don't ask me. I have never seen anything like that within the Uzumakis I have been sealed within for the past hundred years. Said Kurama. Then that leaves the boy's father. We must find out more soon. Said the werefox as he was nervous now. For this boy is of the oldest were bloodlines. One could say he is from the first bloodline. Naruto just watched the werefox and looks over at the nine tails. So what now? Asks Naruto as he doesn't know what you two. We train you to become stronger for there is another were out there that will fight you for your title of alpha as that night you got bitten. They were dying and needed to pass on their title to the next and they didn't want to pass it to the other. Said Kurama. Naruto nodded his head. Okay. I can handle that. But also can you tell me about my parents? He asks. Did I can only tell you what I was only awake for. For I spent most of my time sleeping and I was awake a lot during the 3 SWW as your mother used my chakra a lot against the others like you. For you're not the only out there with a biju sealed within in his gut. Said Kurama as he crimson eyes looked down at Naruto. There are more bijus. Asked Naruto not sure how to feel about others going though what he has been though. Yes, there are nine of us. The more tails the bijus has the stronger they are. I am the strongest of all my brothers and sisters. So count your blessing for I am willing to work with you kit. For my last two I didn't want to work with them. I was forced to as they would just take my chakra. But I will give it to you willingly if you are willing to work with me. Kurama tells him. Well yeah. I want to be friends and partners in this life. I don't want to make you do things you don't want to. Oh by the way what is your name? Asked Naruto as he was now wondering. I will tell you in time. Said Kurama as he forced the boy out of his mind as the boy was now transforming into his werefox from. There laying on his floor Naruto let out a silent scream as his bones shifted and hair grew all over his body. He has taken two forms that night. One of a four-legged beast that was the size of a large wolf but was fox-like and then a man with fox ears and claws and oddly enough a tail. 
It was now 5 am as Naruto had passed out from the pain of his transformations. It was already 8 am when Naruto finally woke up and saw his clothing was all ripped to pieces. Oh man. Even my poor sleeping hat died. He cried to himself for the loss of his night hat. Looking over at the clock Sasami put in his room his eyes grew huge. Man I'm going to be late. He cried as he got up and rushed out the bedroom door and got a quick shower and down the stairs, grabbed the sandwich Sasami made and lunch and his books and rushed to the ninja academy as it was already 9am as he was now in front of the large building and standing there was Washu with his candy in hand. Oversleep Naruchan? Asked Washu as she smiles at him. Yeah botch and I did. But are we still going to dad's? Naruto asked her as he smiles and takes the scroll that holds all his candy. Yes, we'll be going after you're done for the day said Washu as she smirked. Go have fun and enjoy your day. She told him as Naruto nodded his head and waves his goodbye and ran into the building and into his classroom to find his friends already there waiting for him. Village Gates. It's been a while since I've been back. I hope much hasn't changed. Said a white hair man dress very silly as he signed the log. Chapter 4. Ureya slowly made his way to the Hokage Tower. Just taking in the sights of the village. Nothing much has changed since I've last been here. He told himself. A lot has changed since you've been here you old jackass. Came a female voice from behind him. Stopping Jiraiya turns around to see Washu and Sasami standing behind him. Sasami had a glare on her beautiful face and it didn't feel right for the young beauty as for Washu as had an evil smirk married to her face. Something that was making him fell uneasy. Little Washu sensei it has been a while. Said Jiraiya as he was slowly backing up away from the two women before him. Out of nowhere Washu pulls out a giant mallet and hits Jiraiya with it. Sending him flying straight into the Hokage Tower right into Siratobi's office. Hokage's office. All the Anbu jump in front of their leader ready to protect him from any surprise attack when they saw a dark object cone sailing into the office and hit the far side wall. What stunned them was that it was Jiraiya laying there a broken mess. I see little Washu found you before you made it here to the tower. Said Siratobi as if it wasn't a big issue that his former student was attacked by another in his village. Slowly Jiraiya pulled himself together. Slowly pulling himself up using the wall to support himself. Yeah little Washu sensei found me along with Sasami. He told his sensei. Saratobi paled. It wasn't good if Sasami was upset. For the girl was one that would make you pay, and you paid dearly when she was done with you. You made Sasami-chan upset. He questioned with a hint of fear in his voice. Hiraya looked at the old man before him. He had never seen fear in his old sensei. Not even in the two wars or even when the Kayubi destroyed the village. But right here and now this man known as the god of shinobi was showing fear. No. She was just frowning at me. Said Jiraiya as he was now standing before his old sensei's desk. So sensei what did you call me back to the village for? He questioned as they both turned to see two rings appear with cherry blossoms flying around the room wildly. I can answer that. Said Washu as she was now walking forward as Saratobi was standing up and offering the pink at his seat. Nodding her head to took it as Asami stood next to her just glaring still a little upset. Naruto has awakened three bloodlines. From his mother's side. I am still waiting to see if he will awaken his father's bloodline as well. Said Washu as he jade eyes had Jiraiya frozen. But I was sent word that Naruto died. Said Jiraiya as he looked over at his sensei. Sasami froze and looked at Jiraiya question. What do you mean? She asked him. After his second birthday I got a message telling me that Naruto died in a fire at the orphanage. That is why I stopped coming back to the village to see him. Said Jiraiya. Do you still have that message? Asked Saratobi as he hoped this could be used against his former advisors. Well yeah. It's at my place with the toads. I can have one of them bring it to me. Said Jiraiya as he was now confused. What going on here? He questioned. Well Naruto didn't die in no fire. He was thrown out of the orphanage and he lived on the streets for two years before I found him. Said Sasami as a single tear rolled down her cheek. They throw him out on his birthday after I left him. In hopes of the villagers would kill him while he was out wandering around trying to find me and Washu-chan. She told Jiraiya. Jiraiya summoned a ma and pa and had them bring the letter he need and once they returned they as well wanted answers about the young tadpole. The letter that Jiraiya boy got was a fake. Asked pa as he was looking very upset. Yes it was. Said Siratobi as he was looking the letter over. So Minato-chan's little tadpole is still alive. Asked a tearful ma. But he is ma. Said Sasami as she softly smiled at the female toad sage before her. I blame that damn old warhawk. He must have been the one behind this. Said Pa for all knew that the old toad sage had no love for the warhawk. For the man had tried stealing their summon scroll along with others to enslave them for his dirty work. It appears this is Danzo's handiwork. Said Saratobi as he let out a sigh. 
If you look closely you can tell this isn't my handwriting and the seal, he used a fake. Jiraiya why didn't you question this? He questioned his student. Jiraiya looked down with shame. I felt guilty for not being there for the boy. Not being there to take care of him. Not being there like his parents wanted me to be. I guess I saw this letter as freedom from the guilt. He told them his shame was written all over his face. Bashu sighed. I can't blame you. I can be angry at you for not coming and finding out firsthand or even sending one of your summons to find out if it was the truth or not. She told him as she sat back. All I can do now is make up for it. Said Jiraiya as he smiled. I can take some time off of my spy network for everything is running fine and I don't need to be at the next one for six months. He told them. Good for you will begin in training Naruto in Fuinjutsu. Said Washu. Jiraiya nodded his head as one question was on his mind. What bloodline did the boy awaken? He asked. Washu grinned. He awakened wood release, chakra chains, and finally poison ivy. She told them. The awoken what asked a shocked Ma and Pa. Poison ivy hasn't been seen for about 100 years. Said Ma as she remembered her last summoner was a poison ivy user. Ivy Uzumaki was the last poison ivy user that was my summoner. Said Ma as she looked at her webbed hand sadly. It has been so long since she thought of her old friend. I know and today after the academy gets out. Naruto will be heading to his home so we can get him studying his bloodline. We even might have to take him out of the academy for a while and have a poison expert work with until he has it under control. Said Washu as she looked at the files in her hands that appeared out of nowhere. Yes. But I don't think that would work very well with his friend's little Washu. Said Sasami as she knew Ino and Hinata wouldn't have none of that. Washu smirked as she remembered the two heiress having a crush on her little Neri-chan. You might have a point. Well we could pull his little group out as well and have them learn with him. She said as she was thinking out loud to herself. It wouldn't hurt to have a few Fuinjutsu users in his generation. We could do that. It would help with them all being clan heirs. Said Sasami as she was now looking at Siratobi and Jiraiya. We would need to speak to their parents and find out if that is alright with them. Said Siratobi as he knew he was being outvoted and Jiraiya just knew to keep quiet. That would be a grand idea. Said Ma. For whoever he is team up with in the future would need to know how to work well with his bloodlines. She said as she was looking at Pa who was just nodding his head. Academy. Naruto was sitting with Ino and Hinata as they took notes and he listened to Aruka talk as Mizuki just sat there watching the kids writing something down. Alright class. What are the major bloodlines of Konoha? Asked Aruka as he was looking around for anyone to answer. Sakura raised her hand. Yes, Sakura. Said Aruka. They are the Wood Release, by Akigen, Shuringen, then you have the Kurama clan with their bloodline with Yinjutsu. Yamanaka clan with mind walking, Nara shadow jutsu, Akamichi with their body jutsu. Said Sakura as she tried to remember any others. You forgot the Uzumaki clan with their chakra chains, poison ivy, wood release, lava release, Yuin jutsu is a bloodline, slowly aging is also another bloodline, huge chakra reserves, and so on. Then there was Namika's clan with swift release and another bloodline. Said Naruto as all eyes are on him. Who cares about those clans? Said Sakura as she was glaring at Naruto. He narrowed his eyes at the annoying fangirl. Well you should care for Namika's was the late fourth Hokage's last name and clan, and Yuzumaki was his late wife. He growled out as his eyes flashed amber for just a second. Mizuki just laughed but didn't say anything. Demon thinks he knows it all. Now that he has two slaves helping him. Naruto how did you know our late fourth had a bloodline and that he was married? Asked a puzzled Aruka. Oh crap Naruto thought to himself. Just tell them brat. It's coming out sooner or later. Said Kurama as he was laughing behind his cage doors. Minato Namikaze and Kishina Yuzumaki are my parents. Said Naruto. How I know about the bloodlines is for I have three of my mother's clan's bloodlines. He finished as all eyes are on him. Niko vanished from her spot as Inu just watched. Well let the shit hit the fan he thought. Hokage's office. Niko appears before the Hokage and the others. Hokage-sama. Washu-sama. Naruto just spilled the beans. Inu stayed behind to make sure no one hurts Naruto. She told to them. Damn it Naruto. Said Saratobi as he was now making his way to his door. Anbu to the academy now. He yelled. The door appears before Washu as she opens it. Her and Sasami walk though it as another door appears in Naruto's classroom. Academy. The Baka like you doesn't have parents that high profile. You're lying. Yelled Sakura as she was now standing in front of Naruto ready to hit him. Who are you to say who his parents are? Asked Ino as she was glaring at the pinket. Everyone calm down. Yelled Aruka as all the fangirls are now trying to attack Naruto. Just then a door appears in the middle of the classroom as Inu tried pushing the girls back. That is enough out of you. Yelled Washu as the room grew quiet and all the kids froze in their spots. The door vanished behind Washu and Sasami. 
Achan. Sasami Nichan. Questioned Naruto as he was trying to get away from Sakura's fangirl furry. Dust then Sirotobi and his avenue appear in the classroom. That is enough young Haruno. Said the third Hokage as he was now annoyed with how the children are behaving with the blonde hair boy. Biraya stood at the open window looking down at Naruto as Ma and Pa sitting on his shoulder. Tears slowly streamed down Jiraiya's cheeks as he saw the boy for the first time in eight years. He really is alive and he looks so much like his parents. He whispered to himself as he didn't know what to do. Okajama. Said Aruka as he stood straight as Mizuki stood up from his desk as well. Aruka-kun, Mizuki-kun. It is nice to see you both this afternoon. Said Saratobi as he looked back at the children. Okajama, but Naruto is lying about who his parents are. He is a clanless parentless baka. Screeched Sakura as she was now standing before the Hokage. She believed he would take her side and tell the boy to stop lying and that he is nothing. Saratobi's eyes became hard and cold as he looked down at the pinkette ten-year-old girl standing before him. Naruto isn't lying about who his parents are. He was informed just a few days ago about his parents. He told the pinkette as he jaw hung open as it dropped to the flood. All the others in the room looked over at the blood with shock. The loser of their class was the son of their village heroes and late Hokage. It doesn't matter that they are his parents. He is still a loser. Said Sasuke as he looked away and out of the window. Ignoring all those around him. He didn't give a damn. His clan's bloodline was more powerful and better respected than this fool's so-called family's bloodlines. All the fangirls followed their true love's lead and went back to their seats and watched the raven hair boy once more. So, what the do the boy says is true. Questioned Mizuki as he caught himself before he slipped and called the boy demon as Sasami and Washu glared at him. The third Hokage turned looked over at him and smiled. Yes. Young Naruto is telling the truth. Minato and Kishina are his parents and for the safety of the village and for himself, we kept it secret. He explained to the two Chunin teachers. Why would you have to keep the village safe if people knew who Naruto's parents are? Asked Kiba as he didn't know. It is because after the Kayubi attacked our village was weak and if I knew Minato had a child they would have attacked the village. We would have fallen to them. Then if Kumo or Kiri knew the Kishina had a child they would have tried to kidnap him or attack the village. For they would want to stop the Uzumaki bloodline for carrying on to the next generation. Said Jiraiya as everyone looked at the man at the window. Who cares about the Uzumaki? Said Sakura as she crossed her arms over her flat chest. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes at this annoying girl. It is because the Uzumaki clan was the most powerful clan out of all the great clan across the elemental nationals. Said Washu as all eyes are on her now. A 300 member before Yuzu fell in the 2SWW. With only 100 of them being of the main family. As for Naruto's mother was the Yuzukage's daughter. Said Washu as she was interrupted by the same damn pinkette. Well they are not that great if they fell in the 2SWW. Said Sakura. Washu's eyes hardened. Kumo, Kiri and I was sent over 25,000 troops were sent to the island. None never returned to tell the tale of the battle that happened there. Out of 300 members about maybe 50 made it out alive of the Uzumaki family and only one out of the 50 was out of the royal family and that was Kashina Uzumaki. But those 49 people were lost to the wind. There was other clans on that island and other people. The Uzumaki clan made sure they made out of there safely before they thought of themselves. Said Washu. My great great grandfather was at the village when it happened. Said Choji. They made sure he was safely off the island with the others. Washu and Sasami nodded their heads. We left the island at Mito request to help with her children and that her granddaughter was an up and coming medic that would need training. She told them as one could see a far away look in her eyes. Washu I know if we were still there things would have been different. But like they say. Things happen for a reason and Kishina did need us after the news reached the village of the attack. Said Sasami as she had the same haunting look. You see the red spiral on the back of Iruka's flank vest? Asked Washu. All the kids nodded their heads. That is the Yuzumaki clan symbol and Yuzu was our sister village for they helped us build and become a village. For they were the ones that gave us the money to build this village you call home. Said Washu as she glared at Sakura who was ready to fight the other pinket. How do you know all of his? Demanded Sasuke. From Madara and that Senju built this village. He growled. Washu just smirked. For I was there and Madara was nothing but a fool. He was pissed off he wasn't allowed to be the village leader. He was doing a piss poor job as the leader of the Achiha clan. For your own clan was dying as he saw sending them on foolish missions that he knew would kill them. He would just say. They are weak. If they were strong, they would have returned from that mission. A fool like him would have killed everyone here if he was the Hokage. She told him as she glared at the last Achiha. Sasuke's jaw tightened as he didn't like how this woman was talking about his family. What do you know? You look no older than us. You have to be lying. Said one of the random fangirls. Washu grinned as she took her true from. Little girl. 
I am older than what you expect and I have been though all three shinobi wars and I was there during the wearing clan era. I've seen a lot during my time. She told them as Mizuki looked shocked at how beautiful Washu was. She could feel the lust coming from the silver hair man standing behind her. So I know the history of this land. I have lived though it in fighting alongside many great shinobi. But I can tell you that you are nothing but children playing games. For once you finish the academy many of you will not make it out in the field. Many will quiet. While other will die as others will just have nervous breakdowns in the field getting their teammates killed. She told them as she looked at all the fangirls and even at Sasuke as she was tired of all the BS that goes on in this academy. No one said anything. For what she said was true and if someone said it wasn't. They would be lying and trying to fool themselves and the others. The bell rang and all the kids bolted out of the classroom. Washu had frightened them. But the ones that stayed was Naruto and his friends. So. Said Naruto as he looks at Washu. Washu smiled. Well we might be taking you out of the academy for six months. She told him. That made the others stop and look at the pink hair woman. What? Hold up. What do you mean he isn't going to be in the academy for six months? Asked Ino as she wasn't going to have it. Washu held up her hand to stop the young blonde heiress. If your parents allow it and if you wish so. All of you are welcome to join Naruto in his private training. One thing all of you will be learning is Fuinjutsu from Jiraiya. If anyone wishes I will teach you medic ninjutsu and healing herbs and poisons and antidotes. For Naruto will also be training to learn his bloodlines. As well we will teach you all how to deal with him once his poison ivy bloodline kicks in. Naruto looked at Washu with wonder and curiosity. What can I do with that bloodline? He questioned. Ma smiled fondly. Those abilities are going to be interesting to see a male to use. For one of the abilities. She said. Well. Said Washu as she pulled out a scroll and opened it and began to read. Poison ivy powers are. Chlorokinesis. Semi-mystical connection to the plant world through a force called the green being able to control plants with your mind. Toxic immunity. Immunity to all toxins, bacteria and viruses. Toxikinesis. A deliberate overdose of plant and animal-based toxins into her his bloodstream that make her his touch deadly. Pheromone control. Ivy is known to be able to seduce men and women alike, often using pheromones to do so, but even without the pheromones her his beauty is still an asset that can seduce. Increased strength. She he will not need to use chakra to increase their strength. They are as strong as a cage on pure brute strength. Increased agility. She he will be as flexible as gymnasts. As they say they are able to move like the plant the bloodline is named after. Truth serum. A chemical your body makes to get the truth out of anyone you are interrogating. Spying with plants. They are able to speak and listen though plants. Plant avatars. You are able to make plant monsters to go into battle for you. Washu looks up from the scroll. It is said that wood release is a offshot of poison ivy, for you are only able to grow trees and mostly control anything wood. She told Naruto and the others. Wow that is insane. Said Kiba as he looks at Naruto. I wouldn't mind learning about poisons and building up an immunity to it. He finished as he looked at the others. That would be a good thing to learn. Said Ino as she looked at the others. Well then children ask your parents and let me know. Said Siratobi as he smiled at them. It all begins tomorrow. Said Jiraiya as he looked at all the clan children. They all nodded their heads as they left the academy. All the kids went home to ask their parents about taking six months off of the academy to do this training with Jureya of the Sanin and Washu Sama and maybe Sasami for the girl was skilled with weapons and hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Also the girl was a world-famous cook. Near midnight. Naruto stood in his bedroom looking up at the full moon. So are you ready? Asked Kurama. No, not really. Said Naruto as he was nervous about this changes. It will be fine Kit. Said the were fox. Naruto just nodding his head. He took off his shirt and pants and boxers and slowly slide open his window as he began to go through his changes. His eyes turned amber and his bones shifted and bend and broke to change his from as he dropped onto all fours. Fur began growing out of his skin. It was golden and glowing in the moonlight. His amber eyes shifted around the room looking around as he took in a deep breath as he could smell the cool fall air. He jumped out of window and ran into the woods around the compound. Village. Villagers and shinobi alike out late heading home from work or bars heard a bone-chilling howl to the full moon. Tsum stopped dead in her tracks as she heard the howl. Her blood ran cold. She knew that howl was of an alpha powerful one and one that she knew she wouldn't want to face alone. Not even her partner would be enough to face that alpha alone or with her. Quickly she made her way home as she needed to get a team put together. She would not have her gen and daughter joining in on this hunt for the girl could get hurt or worst get killed. She needed a team of Chunin or Jonin to handle this mission. She would have to stop at the Hyuga's compound as well to get one of their Chunins or Jonins to aid her as well. Their standing at her gates was Ko and several other Hyugas. 
Hiyashi-sama heard the howls and sent us to you. He knew you would be by. Said Ko as he and the others bowed to the clan head. Follow me and we will have teams set up for a hunt. Said Tsum. Washu. Washu sat at her computer stunned. The camera she had set up all around Naruto's home had left her stunned. She had watched as Naruto transformed into a werefox. She didn't know what to do or say as she saw the Namaka's symbol appear on his forehead as it faded away as he had fully turned and jumped out of the window. Sasami had walked in behind Washu and watched the video as the pink cat watched the video over again several times. She was shocked herself. Naruto had turned into a werewolf or werefox in his case. Did he just turn into a werewolf? Questioned Sasami as she pulled herself out of her shock as she almost dropped some tea and cakes onto the floor and on Washu. But yeah it is. Stuttered Washu as she tried to figure this out. She had seen it all. But one thing she had never seen was a werewolf or werefox. Could that be the bloodline that Minato was worried about passing on the Naruto-chan? Asks Asami as she remember as how Minato would worry for hours about some old bloodline his family blamed as a curse. I think it might be. But we need to do something to keep him safe. For you know Tsum is hunting wolves and how the idiot let out a howl it isn't going to help him. Said Washu as she was standing up. We need to lead Tsum and the others away from Naruto. Sasami nodded her head as she put down the tray of now forgotten tea and cakes on the table next to Washu's computer, and they both ran out of their home. They had a mission. To keep Naruto safe and Tsum away from their blonde boy. Naruto. Naruto ran though the woods around his home. He was enjoying the fell of the wind in his fur. This is amazing. He growled out. Yeah, yeah. Said Kurama as he was not enjoying the boy rubbing it in. Naruto ignored him. But he was planning on finding a way of opening Kurama's doors so the fox could move around in the woods of his mindscape more freely. Maybe once he was stronger and knew the Biju wouldn't try to eat him or anything. Hokage Tower. Saratobi and Jiraiya both look out the office window when they heard the bone-chilling howl. What was that sensei? Asked Jiraiya as he looked at his old sensei. There was a wolf attack not too long ago and Naruto was the one attack. Tsum isn't happy about this turn of events and is hunting for this wolf that bit the boy. For we don't need a repeat of what happened so long ago. Said Siratobi as he looked at his old student. Gureya nodded his head. Yeah I remember that. It a dark time of our village. Something I worked hard at keeping quiet for many one not from the village to learn about. Said Jureya as he remembered killing several spies that had found out about the wolf attacked. Woods. Tsum and her three teams made their way to the woods near the civilian side of the village. For they knew that the drunks and the homeless would be easy prey for the wolf that had attacked Naruto. Not too far from where Tsum and her team stood a wolf with red eyes and midnight black fur watched them. A low growl escapes its lips. For them being there had stopped its hunt for the night. Slipping back into the shadows of the woods the midnight black wolf vanished back to where it had come from. For now it would have to hunt rabbit or something else. For it wouldn't be able to hunt and kill a human that night. What if Naruto has three bloodlines harem and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.